Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture 9 of taxation, which is capital allowances. Let me remind you that this is a big, major lecture, and for your taxation exam, at least one of the questions will be on capital allowances. Okay. So let's start. Capital allowances on plant and machinery, meaning of plant and machinery, calculating allowances sell of plant and machinery, cessation of trade, cars, assets with private use by the owner of the business, special rate pool. Then we have small pool WDA, that is written down allowance, short life asset, value added tax, summary of computational technique, structures and buildings allowances, practice objective test questions and summary. Now, Let's go through the overview of this lecture. First, plant and machinery, okay? In UK, whenever you purchase something of a capital nature, that is like long-term assets, right? Like your fixed assets, you can say. Like plant and machinery, what they do, they give capital allowances. Capital allowances helps you to reduce your tax. It's like a tax relief. Why? Because capital allowances up to certain amount fixed by the government, you can deduct it from your cost value of plant and machinery. There are some rules that you need to know how much can be deducted and from what assets are eligible for this capital allowances. Not all the assets are eligible, right? So that's why we are studying this capital allowances. Capital allowances in short helps you to reduce your tax. It's like a tax relief for capital purchases. Not any capital purchases provided it is for your trade like plant and machinery. We need plant and machinery to run our operation. So for this type of expenditure, we will give you capital allowances. Now, before that, before knowing capital allowance, one should know the definition of plant and machinery. Which items comes under plant and machinery, which items does not come. The items that does not come under plant and machinery, you can't opt for capital allowance. You have to pay the full cost and you have to pay the tax in the full amount. But plant and machinery, okay, if you, have ex if you have incurred any expenditure, you can claim capital allowance. Therefore, reduce your amount of plant and machinery. Sometimes you might not have to pay any tax and sometimes you might have to pay the tax, but on a reduced amount, which is a beneficial for companies. That's why this is forcefully uh, focusing solely on sole traders, right? self-employed people who have their own plant and machinery that's not for employees because obviously employees will not have their own plant and machinery to claim capital allowances now special asset there are some special assets which will which will go through special assets like cars short life asset integral features and long life assets and private use of assets this four are dealt in a different way okay then we have allowances we have different types of allowances annual investment allowance okay this is fixed annual is given okay an amount we'll see the amount later on first year allowance only first year right writing down allowance after first year allowance comes writing down allowance which is wda the short form and then small pool allowance then we have balancing adjustments don't worry do not panic. We'll slowly touch each one of them. And by the end of this lecture, you will be a pro in each of this. You will know what is right in an allowance. You will know what is small pool allowance. You will know how to calculate. And this lecture has lots of questions. So this will make this lecture a lengthy lecture. Okay. Watch this lecture till the end to have a very clear and a crystal idea of capital allowance. Because 100% you are going to get a question on capital allowance. So let's start. Then we have a short subtopic you could say, which is structures and buildings allowance. For buildings, it does not come under our plant and machinery. For that, we have separate allowances, which is SBA. Under that, we'll see what are the qualifying expenditure for which you can claim this SBA. Then writing down allowance and disposal. Once you dispose a building, how you uh, account for it. Now, Purpose of capital allowance. Why 
capital allowance because as i told you for the business for the self employed people this is like a business tax relief on their capital expenditure remember if you do any repair maintenance you are not going to get capital allowance capital allowance is for capital expenditure so the word capital capital okay only on qualifying assets not any assets and depreciation that has been charged remember it is not allowable while computing tax adjusted trading profit not allowable means see when you are taking profit you have already deducted depreciation but tax authority says no in order to calculate your tax adjusted trading profit you must have already deducted depreciation now add it back okay you can't it's not allowable depreciation is not an allowable expense for you to deduct while computing your tax adjusted trading profit rather they say deduct capital allowance that's why they give you capital allowance if not depreciation then capital allowance capital allowance is a deductible cost that you can deduct when calculating tax adjusted trading profit so having capital allowances will reduce your tax adjusted trading profit that means you are paying lower tax now right now who can claim this capital allowance anyone who buys qualifying assets and who uses it in their trade can claim capital allowances okay now in your tax exam remember capital allowances are not available to unincorporated businesses that use cash basis remember this highlight it somewhere okay now capital allowances are available to both traders sole traders and companies but there is a difference in calculating right there are some difference not major difference but some difference in the rules while calculating capital allowances what is it we haven't touched companies yet we are still in the sole trader right individuals unincorporated businesses so the super deduction there is a super deduction and 50% first year allowance this is only 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 available for companies not for your sole trader so this when we go to the company that time again we are going to touch capital allowance that time remember this rule if even if you forgot it's okay but just remember for sole trader this does not apply now let's go through our qualifying expenditure no one is going to ask in your exam what are the qualifying expenditure you should not list down this is not a knowledge based paper this is applied skill you should be able to apply what you have studied okay they are not going to tell you give list of qualifying expenditure give list of your allowances name out all the allowances no you should know how to calculate so capital allowances are given on the original cost of the capital asset whatever is the cost but remember any subsequent qualifying expenditure of a capital nature for example you have incurred some cost later on to improve that asset to make it usable then even those improvements are taken you add it with your original cost and then on that you claim capital allowance okay even improvements are taken with the cost then relief for capital allowances capital allowances are understand it's an allowable deduction in calculating tax adjusted trading profit then it is calculated for a trader's period of account the period for which they prepare their accounts by the way my next lecture will be on that how do sole trader assess their tax for the, for a period of account because sole trader might have prepared their financial statements to a different date compared to the tax year how do we account for it that is going to be my next lecture okay now this is the key principle you have to ask two question first one does the asset perform an active function or a passive function if it's an active asset is used for the business and if it's a passive function means it's just there in the surrounding right even without that also business could be carried on it is just there it is not so compulsory that without that you can't run 
It is just there. So, if it's an active function, it's a plant and machinery. Passive function, no, it's not a plant and machinery. So, in your exam, first thing is you have to first identify also whether it's a plant and machinery or not. If it's plant and machinery only, you can claim capital allowance. Otherwise, you can't. Asset deemed to be plant according to law. Some assets are very easy. Easily, you can say this is a plant and machinery. While some assets are not. Okay, some assets are deemed to be planned by the law. The law says so. So we'll go through those. Okay. So because the law says due to the law, they will be treated as planned. Even though by the above definition, if you go, if you go by the key principle, they might not be planned for you. For example, they might not be active function, but because the law says you have to assume they are planned. This includes, please go through this list, okay? Assets deemed to be planned by the law. One, the cost of alterations to the building needed for the installation of plant. You have to alter the building. Why you need it? Because to install that plant, otherwise you can't install the plant. That's why it is planned. Cost of alteration is planned. Expenditure on acquiring computer software. Obviously, without computer software, how are you going to operate? You need the updated version of the software. That's a plant. Assets deemed not to be planned. Okay. Remember, land, buildings, structure, they are not planned. For capital purpose, allowance purpose. But for them, there's a separate allowance. Not for land. For land, we have no allowance. But for buildings and structure, SBA. Structure and buildings allowance. Summary. In exam, these are some most common plant and machinery that you will be tested on. First one, computer and software, machinery, cars and lorry, office furniture, movable partitions, air conditioning, alterations of buildings needed to install plant and machinery. Buildings that cannot be planted. Okay, the law says they give list of items that are associated with buildings that are part of the buildings but they are not planned. Such as, for any building, we know that we need a floor, we need wall, we need ceiling, we need door, we need window, we need stair. They are not planned. They are building. Main services and systems of water, electricity, gas, whatever you need in a building. Right? But, the following may fall within the definition of a building, but they still can qualify as a plant. They are like this. Electrical, cold water, gas system. Why? Because, see, there is no use of giving cold water or gas system. There is a purpose. What is the purpose? Mostly it is for the requirement of trade. That's why it falls under plant. The reasons we do this is to serve the particular machinery used for the purpose of that trade. That's why even if this falls within the definition of building, they qualify as plant. But not the above ones. Not the walls, floors, ceiling. They are not plant. They are building. Now, we have more which qualify as plant, but fall in the definition of building. Space, water heating system, system of ventilation, air cooling, see any ceiling of flow that is, comp that is comprised in such systems. Manufacturing or processing equipment, storage equipment, display equipment, counter, checkout, similar equipment, cookers, washing dish, washing machine, dishwasher, refrigerator, similar equipment, wash basin, sink, bath, shower, sanitary ware, similar equipment. All of this are plant even if they fall within the definition of building. Furniture and furnishing. Oh, the list is long. Lift, skeleton, skeleton and moving walkways. Sprinkler equipment and fire alarm system. Movable partition walls. Decorative assets for the enjoyment of a public in a hotel, restaurant or similar trade. Advertising, hoarding, signs and similar display. Now, we are moving to the main pool. See, capital allowances when we take, we don't add all the assets and then cap charge capital allowance. No, 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 no. We divide it into different category. Here, for capital allowance, we divide it into pool. We pull all the assets of a similar nature into one group. So, first major one is known as main pool or general pool. You will understand when we do calculations. Now, normally, any expenditure on plant and machinery falls under this. Okay. 
So we don't calculate capital allowances line by line on individual assets. We group them together under one category or two or three or four. Okay. Most items are in the general pool. But even some cars are in the main pool. Namely this cars. You need to remember this CO2 emission as well as the whether it is a new brand car or a second hand car. You need to know this to decide in which pool it will fall. All cars with CO2 emission between 1 gram and 50 gram. Emissions between 1 gram per kilometer and 50 gram per kilometer are in the main pool. All car. Second hand cars with zero CO2 emission. This too falls in the main pool. Now, when an asset is acquired, remember the purchase price will increase in the main pool. And when an asset is disposed, value will go down from that pool. Okay, and how do you do that? When, when you dispose, there's a rule. The pool value is reduced by the lower of sale proceeds and original cost. You have to see whichever is lower by that amount only you will reduce the pool. If sale proceed is lower, you will reduce by that. If original cost is lower, you will reduce by that amount. Certain items are not in the main pool. They are new zero C2 emission cars. New. The other one which went to main pool was second hand zero CO2 emission car. But if it's a new brand car with zero CO2 emission car, it's not in the main pool. New, a second hand car with zero to emission exiting 50 grams per kilometer, not in the main pool. Assets that are used for the private purpose of the owner of the business, not in the main pool. Maybe partly used or maybe fully used. Mostly partly used because if it's fully used by the owner of the business, you can't claim capital allowance. It should be partly used. Let's say 30%, 40%. They will give you the percentage. And any expenditure incurred on a short life assets. For short life asset, we have a separate section. That's why. Where an election to depool is made. If it's a short life asset, we, we can have an election to depool. Earlier, we were pooling everything. Now, we depool it. Keep them separate. And any expenditure that comes under special rate pool. How we have main pool? Second category is special rate pool. Remember, main pool percentage and special rate pool percentage are different. Okay. Now, annual investment allowance, AIA. Now, by now, you must have gone through so many allowances, right? In tax, till now. We went through personal allowance. Then in pension, my previous lecture, we went through another allowance, right? Annual allowance, maximum annual allowance. Here, for capital, in fact, in taxation, we have lots of allowances in every chapter, I think. So, do not confuse them, okay? Keep them separate and try to remember them separately and what it applies for, okay? So, annual investment allowance, AIA. For the what we studied for pension was annual allowance double a this is aia investment annual investment allowance annual investment allowance for this tax year is 100, 1 million first 1 million it's a 100 percent allowance for the first 1 million that you've incurred in a 12 month period on plant and machinery now these are the key rules this is available to all businesses, the AIA, and it is available when you acquire plant and machinery either in the main pool or either in the special rate pool. But AIA is not available on cars. And this is limited to a maximum of 1 million amount. And this has to be incurred in 12 month period. That means each 12 month period you will get this. Okay, for every 12 month annual. Annual means every year, it's not one time. Then, if some of you might have a period of account, long or short, you have to adjust this. Maximum allowance then will be increased or decreased. If it's for shorter period of time, shorter than 12 month, it will be reduced. Longer period of time, it will be increased. Period of account, okay, this long period, short period of account is my next lecture. 
that I'm going to cover. So please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed so that you get the notification of my latest video. Now, this not available in the period of account in which the trade ceases. Remember, in the period of account when the trade ceases, you can't claim AIA. Now, what happens when a business spends more than this 1 million in a 12 month period? Any expenditure above this, don't worry, they qualify for another allowance. The second allowance that is WDA, writing down allowances. Now, taxpayers, see, even if you have this allowance, it does not mean you have to claim all or any of this AIA. You might have, you might not have claimed it also if you do not want to. It's not compulsory that you have to utilize it. It's your wish. It's your choice. But remember, any unused AIA you can't carry forward or you can't carry back. That means if you haven't utilized the 1 million limit in the year that you are eligible, I mean, you have and you haven't used the entire 1 million, it will be lost. It will be simply just lost. Now let's do questions. Illustration 1. In illustration 1, we have two requirements. A. Calculate Matthew's AIA and the balance on the main pool after deducting AIA. B, same calculation but without purchasing plant and machinery. Right, you have to assume Matthew did not purchase plant and machinery. So, you have been given plant and machinery, office furniture equipment and a car, which, which is a new car. CO2 emission is 45 for the use of his manager. So now let's quickly start with A. Okay, A. How are you going to start A? So A, we are going to have a main pool. Here we are only going to have main pool. Since we have not yet attached the other pools yet. Okay, we have other pools. And for your exam, you are going to get all the pools. But here, since this is the beginning, just assume it's there is only one pool. Okay, main pool. Now, in this main pool, any things that you have purchased, any addition, you are going to add. Okay, additions. What are the additions? First one. Since you have plant and machinery and you are going to deduct AIA. Now, remember not everything qualifies for AIA. What is it? Car. Out of this three, car is the only one which does not qualify for AIA. So we can quickly take it into the main pool without deducting AIA because car does not qualify for AIA. Okay. Especially car 11,000 why this car's CO2 emission is between 1 to 50 it's between between 1 to 50 it's 45 grams per kilometer the CO2 emission so 11,000 next qualifying for a I A. There are two things. One is the plant and machinery. The other one is the office furniture. Both will qualify for A I A. So we'll add them together first. Plant and machinery P M. Office furniture O F. I'm just using initials. Okay. What is the amount? One million sixty thousand and one seventy thousand. So we'll add here. Just put a small column inside column we call this as inside column okay and the main pool is the main one so any addition subtraction will do here 1,060,000 and 170,000 
Now we'll add. It's 1,230,000. Then we are going to deduct our maximum AIA. Maximum is how much? You should know this limit. It is 1 million. So after you deduct, the total is 230,000 which goes in the main pool. Okay, now add 11,000 with 230,000 which is 241,000. So this is the balance after you deduct your AIA, Annual Investment Allowance. Okay. And remember, after this AIA, you are eligible for writing down allowance known as WDA. We have not covered it yet in the lecture, which we are going to cover later, a little bit later. And now we are going to go to B. Okay. So A is done. B, assuming no plant and mesh net. So same. Okay, we'll do. We can do B also here. You don't do it. You have to do it again. This is in order to save time. Okay. So 11,000. The car will be same. There will be no change in the car. Okay. Plant and machinery he had. He did not purchase. Only office equipment. So only office equipment is 170,000. So out of 170,000. Now he is eligible for. This will be 170,000 now. Only 170,000. So AIA, can he deduct the entire 1 million? No, now it is limited to 170,000 only. Here it will be 0. So the balance this time will be 11,000 only. Okay. So the unused AIA, what is the unused AIA? 1,170,000. What is the balance? 830,000 is lost. You don't have to write this. This is just for understanding purpose. That this 830,000 AIA which has not been utilized is now lost. And remember a car purchased for use by an employee, okay? This is just I am telling you in addition. You don't have to write it. If a car is purchased and it is used by employee, it still goes in the main pool. Why? Because it is used for the purpose of business. That's why it goes in the main pool. Whether the employee has used it, uh, used it privately or not, does not matter. It will go in the main pool only. Because why, why will employee use a car? Only for the business purpose. Right? Even though the employee uses it partially. Doesn't matter. Still, it will go in the main pool. Now, let's go to our next allowance. That is FYA. FYA. First year allowance for new zero emission cars if you have a car which is new and which has zero emission you are eligible for fya known as first year allowance remember this allowance is only for first year of the purchase it's one time and aia is not available on cars but you have 100% first year allowance which is available on purchase of new zero CO2 emission car. 100% FYA is given as follows. The period you have acquired the car, you are going to get 100% FYA. That means 100% of the amount of the car. That is your first year allowance. Instead of WDA. WDA is known as writing down allowance. Okay. That is an, another allowance that is given after claiming AIA. But rather than that, for a car, you are given FYA. And remember, a business cannot have both FYA and WDA in the first year. You can't. 
you can only have one either of one next unlike aia and wda fya is never time apportioned whether you have a period of more than 12 months or less than 12 months fya is 100 percent you don't have to scale it up or down and taxpayer does not have to utilize all or any of the fya it's their wish if they want they can take if they don't want they don't take but for exam purpose we always go by the assumption that they will claim it okay now if you have not used your fya your written down, writing down allowance wda is available if you have not used fya at all remember wda is then available for you now however let's say fya is only partially used then what happens balance of the cost then goes into the main pool but then it is not entitled to any other allowance in that first year first year only first year allowance okay fyas are not given in the period in the final period of trading when you are seizing that period you will not be given a fya and if the zero emission car is not new what happens that means it's second hand let's say then it is treated in the same way as a car with a zero co2 emission of between 1 to 50 that means the cost will go to the main pool just now we saw an example like in illustration one that co2 emission was 45 grams so it was added into the main pool and no fya or ai will be available on that car okay remember fya is only for zero, new zero emission car if it's not new then even if it is zero emission still it will be going to the main pool no fya no ai is anyway not available in cars now because new car with zero co2 emission qualifies for 100 percent first year allowance what happens FYA is effectively a full tax allowable deduction, isn't it? You can deduct entirely the whole amount. That means whatever your cost of car in the year of the purchase, you can deduct it entirely. That's good. That's a good news. But if these cars are provided for the private use of employees, what happens? See, there are so many rules. I know tax is a little bit very technical area, so you need to remember a lot of rules. And the best way to remember is not memorizing these rules by heart. It is to practice questions with numbers. The more you practice, the more and more rules you can then apply and remember well. Okay. We are definitely going to do lots of questions in this lecture. Don't worry. So if a car is used for the private use of employee, then 2% of the car benefit percentage applies. Remember, if you are giving a car to employ, it's like a benefit. We have studied this benefit in kind, right? when we studied self-employment income when we studied employment income sometimes we give benefit in like it's a non-cash it's benefit in kind like giving leaves cars right like so two percent will apply to that and there are minimal income tax implications for employee remember if an employee is going to receive a benefit he's going to pay tax in that right for employee so also low class 1a national insurance we haven't covered national insurance yet we are going to cover it okay so that time we, are, we you will understand better what is this 1a nic national insurance contribution if you have not understood 1a national insurance contribution yet do not worry you can forget about this point for the moment when we go there again come back here again and then you will understand this better okay for now you understand that there is in nci there are types there are different types of nci class 1 class 1a class 2 class 3 class 4 there are four classes of nci and each are paid on different by different people some are paid by employer some are paid by employee and they have different threshold right which we are going to study of course when we touch nci for now you don't have to remember all those 
so out of that group 1a class 1a is one type okay so low class 1a national insurance contributions are payable by the employer you have to know that this is paid by employer why because benefits when we are providing benefit it, it comes under class 1a now so therefore if you are providing a zero emission car as a benefit for your employees it's very tax efficient for both employees and employer and especially for directors who own their own companies as 100% shareholders for them is very tax efficient okay now next writing down allowances wda this annual there is annual wda allowance and the percentage is 18% this works on a reducing balance basis how we go for reducing balance for a depreciation method right straight line method reducing balance same way we keep on reducing 18 percent every year so this allowance the percentage is 18 percent and it goes in the main pool so it is given on this amount any expenditure that is unrelieved unrelieved means after you have deducted your fya aia whatever is remaining will be brought into the main pool okay and on that you have to apply 18 percent plus obviously you will be having some amount brought forward this year from the previous period then any addition you have made this year on which AIA and FYA is not available. Plus, any addition that is not covered by AIA, that means it is exceeding that limit, 1 million limit. After taking account of disposal, any disposal you have deducted, after that only, this comes, WDA, you will apply the 18%. First, you will bring down all the expenditure. You will claim whatever allowances are available, like AIA, WD, sorry, FYA, then you will claim WDA. So, overall, how do you compute this? Remember, in your tax, you will do computations for only one period of account. But for tutorial purpose, and if you see the illustrations in this chapter, they will cover multiple accounting periods for you to practice the technique more and more. In all the questions, you should assume the tax year 2022-23 rules apply throughout. It could be different years. Take same tax year rule will apply. So now let's do questions. Illustration 2. Illustration 2 is carried forward from illustration 1 of part A. Okay. You have to calculate the total capital allowances available to Matthew. After claiming the AIA from your illustration one. In case you forgot illustration one questions, you can always go back and check, but I will carry forward from there. Okay, so let's do. So in your illustration one, we had an additions not qualifying for AIA or FYA, that is a car. Okay main pool i'm going to rewrite it again this is from illustration one i'm carrying it forward to illustration two this time you're going to have two pool first in illustration one we already had main pool now in illustration two we are going to have another column towards the right side of main pool known as allowance can you see the development we are building slowly slowly we are building up that pro forma a standard pro forma to calculate capital allowances for your exam now so three columns this is an inside column this is the main pool and this is the allowance car does not qualify for ai or fyu okay so it goes in the main pool eleven thousand. then we had plant and machinery which qualifies for aia and also office equipment right office equipment the amount was 1,060,000 all this are from illustration 1 and 170,000 the total was 1,230,000 out of that AIA will be 
1 million that you can claim. Now one more thing you have to do. That is the moment you write any allowance, whether in the main pool or any pool, you immediately write it in the allowance column. In this case, you will not forget that you have missed out any allowances. For example, here, allowance, first allowance is AIA of 1 million, right? This 1 million, immediately you will write here, 1, you see, in the allowance column, because it's a form of allowance. Then, 230 goes in the main pool, 230,000. 230 comes from 1 million, 230,000 minus 1 million, the AIA. So, the balance goes in the main pool, 230,000. It's not the balance of the main pool that you write in allowance. It is this, whether it's FYA, AIA or WDA. This goes in the allowance column. Next, you add 11,000 with 230,000 is 241,000. Okay, now comes your illustration two. Now you have to claim WDA, how? On the main pool, main pool balance, how much? 18%. You have to write it. You should always write which form of allowance it is. You have to name it. Just writing allowance, not enough. You have to write if it's AIA, AIA. No need to write the full sentence. When you are doing allowance question, examiner will understand AIA means annual investment allowance. Examiner will understand WDA is writing down allowance. Examiner will understand FYA is first year allowance. But, but, only for capital allowance question. Don't write this in any other question. Okay. WDA. How much? You have to write the percentage. Why? We have another percentage for a special rate pool, which we are going to cover later. So 18% into on what balance? 240,000. 241,000 is the balance in the main pool. Remember, WDA is a reducing balance basis, like how we deduct depreciation from an amount, then calculate depreciation, then we deduct, then it's like that. It works in the same way. So 18% of 241,000 is 380,000. This you are going to deduct from here. You have to reduce it. And remember, this is WDAS. 43,380 is a WDA. It will immediately go into the allowance section, allowance column. 43, 380. And now, there are two allowances now. What are the two? AIA of 1 million, WDA of 43,380. Okay. Now, once you deduct WDA from the amount in the main pool, the amount, the title is known as T W D V carry forward. TWDV stands for tax written down value. Tax written down value. So 241,000 minus 43,380 is 197,620. Okay. Now, what will be your total allowances? The question asked for total allowances. At the end, you always have to add up your allowances section. Total allowances. You need two things in capital allowance. One is this amount tax written down value carried forward. Why? The next year you will carry this forward and on this you will start adding any addition, deduct disposal, then claim all allowances, AY, FYA, AIA, WDV, WDA, sorry. Okay. So now it's 1 million plus 43380. So 1043380. This is the total allowance. Add the two allowance WDU and AIA. Now, let us go to illustration number 3. See, illustration number 3 and test your understanding 1 are same type of question. Only the figures amounts are changed. So, I am not going to solve test your understanding 1 for you. You can do it by yourself after I finish test your understanding. Sorry, illustration 3. You just have to follow the illustration 3 technique and apply it in test your understanding 1. So let's start. You have been given 2 trading profit. Before 
deducting capital allowances. One is for 31st December 2023. The other one is for 31st December 2024. You have been given trading profit. Okay. Before capital allowances. So you need capital allowances first, then deduct, then get the trading profit after adjusting capital allowance. That's what the question is asking you. Okay. They want tax adjusted trading profit for both years. To calculate tax adjusted trading profit, you need to deduct capital allowances. For that, you need to calculate capital allowances first. Okay. So on 9th May, what plant and machinery of this amount? Second hand CO2 emission between this of 6500, new 02 car of 13600. Immediately by reading this, one should know which one is qualified for AIA, which one is qualified for FYA, which one is not qualified for anything. And at the end, the remaining will be obviously WDA. So, plant and machinery, this amount is qualified for AIA. This 6500 is not qualified for anything. No AIA, no FYA. This one, 13,600, since it's a new and zero, 13,600, it is qualified for FYA. Okay, so now let's quickly do that. Illustration three. Now, you need three columns. Okay, first column will be trading profit, TP. Next one will be capital allowance, CA. You need working for this, okay? Whenever you perform a working, always write in bracket W or working one, two, three, whatever you want to label it. However you want to label it, you have to label it to show to the examiner that you have done a working here to get this capital allowance. Here, trading profit, no working. Why? Straight, you, will go, you are going to carry forward this amount only. Whatever is there in the question, you are just going to write it, copy paste it. That's why. Then, the amount will be tax adjusted trading profit. This is what examiner asked you. For this, you have to do a lot of working. Okay. And also for two years. One is year ended 31st December 2023. The other one is 31st December 2024. So first we are going to write the trading profit as it is. 1,520,770. Then 1,525,000. Now the rest all will go. Always keep the main, main, this is the main table ahead of your working. Working should be done later. You should not do the working first and then show the main answer. Examiner will get confused. Which one is the working? Which one is the main answer? Okay. So keep some space. Then working. You have to label it. Clearly you have to reference. Working. Which, which working? Capital allowance. computation or calculation anything you can write okay now we're going to follow the three column that we have just studied the inside column where we are going to do subtraction addition working then main pool then our allowance column okay uh, pound sign okay Remember the car, which one is not qualified for anything? Second hand car with 0 to emission of 43, 6500, not qualified for anything. So we'll write that first in the main pool, 6500. We can just write second hand car. You have to write the correct description, okay? I'm writing it in order to save time, okay? You Remember, when you are writing, you have to clearly write, not qualifying for AIA or FYA. Then you are writing the car. Then you have to write the range also, between 1 to 50. Okay, 6,500. Then, anything qualifying for AIA, then you have to write, okay, not qualifying. Okay, I will just write as it is, otherwise you will get confused. I think it's better. I will write the correct description, what they have written. 
this is very important okay not qualifying for aia uh, for or for aia or fya first you have to write this under this whatever is not qualified you have to write first is car just writing car is not enough you have to write the range in bracket co2 emission co2 emission okay 1 to 50 you can just write between 1 to 50 6500 i have already written it then next category is qualifying qualifying for aia what is it the plant and machinery pnm what is the amount 1 million to 50000 you can see from here this one she what plant and machinery so 1 million to 50000 this will go in in the inside column because you need to deduct aia then aia how much maximum is 1 million remember the moment aia you write since it's an allowance write in the allowance column also 1 million this is the way of doing it don't wait till the end that you will write the allowance no you have to keep on doing like this you have to horizontally work across not work work downwards cross horizontal okay so now 250000 here 250000 will go in the main pool the balance now wda remember any fya since fya you can write first or later doesn't matter why fya you will get 100% of the amount it will not be eligible for any allowance at the end amount balance is zero so that's not going to have any impact but first you have to write not qualifying for aia fya qualifying for aia fya you can write any time later or after it's not going to have any impact because the amount will be zero okay so 256500 because 6500 plus 250 so 256500 is the amount and on this there's going to be an allowance wda okay on this wd 18 percent you have to write the percentage 18 percent of 256500 how much 46170 remember this is also an allowance it will go here 46170 okay now qualifying additions qualifying for fya this is another column new zero emission car okay FYA is 100%. What was the amount of car? 13,600. It is zero here. Remember, FYA is also an, allow uh, it's an allowance. So it will go here 13,600. So deduct 256,500. In the main pool, you will have 210,330. And allowance, if you add all, all the three AIA, WDA, and FYA 1,059,700. Okay, so this, this you will deduct from this here, here is for 2023 capital allowance 1,059,770 and then you are going to get your tax adjusted trading profit which is 46 461,000 461,000 now we'll do for the next year you just have to carry forward this okay this is total allowance this one is tax written down value carried forward this 210 330 this will be carried forward next year 2024 
so on this now you have to calculate 18 percent so you have to write the year always year ended 31st december 2024 first see you will not get any first year allowance because nothing is there this year no you are going to get any aia because you have not purchased anything during this year but wda every year you will get it on the carried forward balance so 18 percent on this 210 330 which is 37859 since this is an allowance you will write here also 37859 so this year allowance you don't add you don't add with this no addition because this is previous year this is this year so this year allowance is 37859 this is this year allowance and then tax return down value is 172471 you deduct this from his. So 37,859 is the allowance this year. Deduct from here. 37,859. Then my tax adjusted trading profit will be 1,487,141. Done. Now, perfect. Test your understanding one if you see is the same. You have this. You have this. True profit before capital allowance. Calculate capital allowance. You have acquired plant and machinery this much. New CO2 emission with this 10,000, which is not qualifying for anything. And new zero to emit car 11,100 qualifying for FYA. Same way you can do tax adjusted to any profit for both years. It's the same like illustration 3. So please try it yourself. short or long periods of account the aia and wda are given for period of account period of account means period for which a trader prepare their account remember the 1 million that has been given for the aia and the wda percentages 18 percent this are based on a period of account of 12 months that means if you have a period of more than 12 months or less than 12 months you have to proportion them accordingly the 1 million limit and the 18 percent of wda shorter or longer period means either your aia or wda will be increased or reduced let's say if the period is exceeding 12 months you must split this into two capital allowance computation how the first 12 month and the next one will be the remaining six months whatever the remaining periods okay the total allowances are then deducted from the tax adjusted profit of the long period we'll do calculations then the most common occasion for a business means who is not having a 12 month period of account at the start of trading it's very common let's say you have just started trading in the middle of the year so let's say you'll be only having six month period of account it's very common remember fya first year allowance are never adjusted to reflect the length of the period of account it is only aia and wda fya will be 100 percent no matter whatever is the length of the period of account period of account is the next lecture which we are going to cover okay so now let's do questions we have two questions one is illustration four where we have a long period of account the other one is test your understanding two where we have a short period of account but the way we calculate is the same same type of question just the figures are changed one is having long, the other one is having short period. So now, you need to calculate capital allowance for each of the period of trading. Now, the company started trading on 1st of April 2023 till 31st May 2024. This is a 14-month period. Okay. They bought plant and machinery for 1.1 million. New car with CO2 emission of 46,19,800 and new zero emission car of 13,000. 
Now, whenever you are given car with some emission, less than 50 and more than 50, car with zero emission and plant and machinery or any fixtures, you need to clearly visualize under which category it will fall whether it is under special rate pool, whether it is under small pool, whether it is under main pool, and whether it will be qualified for AIA, FOIA, or WDA. Okay, you have to be very thorough with this and accordingly draw the columns up and put it in the right category. Since we have done so many questions till now, so I'm sure you should be able to tell now, right? That plant and machinery will qualify for AIA. Then, what about new car with CO2 emission of 46, 19,800? This goes in main pool. Okay. This goes under main pool and it will qualify for what? WDA. And new zero emission car 13,000, FYA. It is FYA. So now, Let's quickly do that. Same thing you have to do for Tesha Understanding 2 also. The only difference is it's a short period of account. It's for a four month period. Let's start. So here, as I told you, like previous questions, you should draw up three columns. One for inside working, the other one is main pool, and the other one is allowance. So we'll quickly do that on the right hand side. This is for 14th month till 31st May 2024. Okay, three columns we'll have. This one is inside working. Then we have this one. This is the main pool. And then we have allowances. Okay, now all these are what additions? We have no borrowed forward balances. We have added this here. Not qualifying. First one is not qualifying for A, I, or F, Y, A. Is what? The car. And you should mention which car? CO2 emission between 1 to 50 grams. That was 46, right? Any car which falls within this range will not qualify for AIA FYA. It was 19,800. Goes in the main pool. Okay. Now the next category. Qualifying for AIA is what? Plant and machinery. Plant and machinery B and M. How much? 1 million. 1.1 million. Remember. Now Wait, I think I've missed the zeros. Okay, 1.1 million. Now to deduct AIA, remember, the limit is 1 million, but it's only for 12 months, and this is a 14 month. You have to adjust for 14 months. Okay, so you have to do, what you have to do is 14 divided by 12 into 1 million. Okay, when you draw it up like this, the amount comes to 1,166,667. It's more than 1.1 million. So, through this allowance, you can entirely cover, right? You can entirely deduct this amount because this amount is more than plant and machinery. So, deduct the entire amount. Remember, the remaining balance between 1.1 million and this amount is lost. Okay? So, in the main pool, it will be zero. And since this 1.1 million, you have to write it in the allowance section also. As I told you, work across. Now, what's remaining in the main pool is just 19,800. Now, on this WDA, of what 18%? Wait just a minute. Eighteen percent into nineteen thousand eight hundred, but you have to apportion this WD as well into fourteen divided by twelve for fourteen months. Okay, which will come up to you will deduct this from main pool. 
4158. Remember this 4158 is WDA. It's a form of allowance. So in the allowance section also, you will write 4158. Now, there's a new car with zero emission of 13,000. So this one is qualifying for, always write qualifying for this, qualifying, not qualifying for this. It makes it easier, FYA. Which car? You have to write new zero emission car, FYA. Of how much? 100%. What is the amount of the car? 13,000. FYA will be 13,000, full amount. And remember, FYA, you never time a portion. It could be for less or more than 12 months. Okay. OLD, AIA and WDA, you take for 14 months. So, it's zero here. 13,000 is FYA, form of allowance. You write it in the allowance section. Now, in your main pool, 19,800 minus 4158. You will write the balance. 15642. Remember this is a balance carried forward. There is a name for this. TWDV carried forward. Tax written down value. You don't write the entire form. You just write the initials. TWDV. Examiner will know it. And here another column. Very important. Total allowance. Because this is the amount that you deduct from tax adjusted profit. How much? Just add all the three allowances. AIA, WDA, FYA. 1,117,158. But this is only for 14 months. Okay? You have written here. 14 months till 31st May 2024. Now, year ended 31st May 2025. Always check the date, whether dates are correct or not, right? From 1st of April to 31st May, you have started. But from 31st May 2024 to 31st May 2025 is just 12 months. Now you don't have to time a portion, okay? Now it's normal, 12 months only, it will follow. So this year, no AIA because you have not purchased anything. No FYA, only WDA of 18% on what amount? On this amount. Tax written down value. 15,642. Remember, if your tax written down value goes wrong, next year WD also will go wrong. Okay? 15,642. You don't have to apportion because this is for year end of 31st May. It is from 31st May 2024 to 31st May 2025. Always check the dates. So it's 2816. Deducted. 2816 is a form of allowance for this year only. 2816. So this year total allowance will be 2816 only. But here tax return down will be 12826. This will be carried forward next year. But you don't have to show for next year because they already asked for till this year. Okay. Now we'll do test to understanding too. How we have done for this one. Remember, this is for 4 months only. Okay. So here, they started. He prepared accounts and then, see, he prepared accounts for 4 months till 31st May. Uh, sorry, from 1st of May to 31st August 2022. After that, and then the year ended 31st August 2023. That's why you have to show for 2. It's the same. Plant and machine for 470. Car with zero to emission 11,500. New zero emission car 16,500. Only difference is four months. So here itself, we can do the working since we have already illustrated the performer. So it's easier to save time. Okay. So here, rather than 19,800, now I will deduct this and I will write 11,500. Not qualifying for AIA or FYA, the second hand car. Then here in the plant and machinery, what will go is 470,000. But AIA have to be adjusted now. It is for four months only. Okay. So remember, now this is only for four months. Four. So four divided by 12 into 100,000 will be how much? 
it will be 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 333,333. So it's less than 470 and daily AIA will be covered by this. Six threes. Then you will be left with Mm. One, three, six, 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 seven. So once you add this, this adds up to one, four, oh, just one, four, eight, one, six, seven. Okay. Then it is here. Remember, this is three, three, three. So here the amount will be of the capital allowance three, 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 three. Okay, and here it will be eighteen thousand into. 18% into this amount. 148167. So here also 148167 for 4 months. Okay. It will be 8890. Here also 8890. Will be the amount. Okay. Now. Here the amount is. New car with zero emission 16,500 qualifying for FYA 16,500. It will not be time apportioned, so zero. Remember, sorry, this 8890 will go here. It's an allowance, not go here. Sorry, okay. Now one three nine two seven seven now here this will be sixteen thousand five hundred so if you add all the three allowance will be uh three five eight seven twenty three And then next year it will be 18% only on this amount. 139277, which will be 25070. And here the amount will be 114,207. And here this will be the allowance 25070. So this year allowance will be 250 70 only. That's it. So isn't this calculations easy guys? Please practice it by yourself. Both with long and short period. Next is length of ownership in the period of account. It is important to distinguish between length of period of account and the length of ownership of the asset during that period. WDA is applied proportionately according to the length of period of account. We have just seen it. Then WDA, remember, it is never, never restricted by the reference to the length of ownership of the asset in the period of account. It does not matter whether you own the asset or do not own the asset. What matters is just the length of the period, less than 12 months or more than 12 months. If a business prepares accounts, let's say for year and the 31st March 2023, okay, the WDA will be same whether the asset was purchased on 10th of April 2022 or 31st March 2023. It will be the same. WDA is available 
provided the asset is owned on the last day of the period of account even if you get the asset on the last day of the period of account still you are eligible for wda of 18 percent w at the main pool okay so the actual length of the period ownership of the asset is not relevant now what if when you are selling the plant and machinery then what do you have to do then you have to see the disposal value you have to take the lower of the sale profit and original cost and deduct it from the total of tax return down value carried forward tvdv plus any additions to the pool this are the additions to the pool we have just done questions we have just performed the pro forma over and over and over again in different test your understanding and illustrations at the end of this lecture or uh, let's say in the mid of this lecture you will be given the pro forma entire pro forma on how to do capital allowance which one needs to remember okay now any additions not qualifying for aia or foia you add any additions qualifying but not covered by aia you add wda then is calculated on the remaining figure if the sale proceed exceeds the original cost what happens then you deduct the the disposal value deducted from the pool is restricted to the original cost of the asset you can't have a negative balance there if your sale proceed is more than original cost you deduct the original cost only that means the balance becomes zero and any excess of sale proceed over the original cost then will be taxed as a chargeable gain you will definitely understand this when we do questions on sale of plant and machinery which we are going to do therefore on a disposal always deduct from the correct pool correct pool the lower of sale proceed and original cost now let's do question illustration 5 and test your understanding 3 both have similar question which is sale of plant and machinery so here and there is no longer short period of account it is 12 month so you don't have to worry about adjusting the wda or aia okay now he had two transactions on 5th of june plant sold for 1200 which he purchased for 8000 and 3rd september he purchased plant for 204000 tax written down value was 10000 brought forward similar way test understanding 3 i am doing it simultaneously so it saves time and you understand the pattern of the question it is repeated here four separate dates two purchase two sold purchased a car with co2 emission of 42 which is between 1 to 50 that means it's not qualifying for aia or foia goes to main pool 24000 sold a plant for 12400 but bought it for 15000 you have to choose this amount because this is the lower of sale proceed is lower than the cost then he sold a van for 700 but she paid 600 for it so she has to choose 600 and purchased a plant for 184 500 tax written down value was 21000 okay so now let's do illustration 5 first and in the same format we can also do test understanding 3 later so let's quickly do that okay now so three columns quickly make and then okay I'll do it here. Main pool allowances. Okay. So here, first always start with the brought forward balance tax, written down value carried forward. Sorry, brought forward was what? and it goes in the main pool 
additions qualifying for AIA. Because he sold a plant. Okay, plant qualifies for AIA. He has not bought any car or anything. For illustration 5. So only plant and machinery which qualifies for AIA of how much? 204,000 here. So AIA will be up to 1 million, so 204,000. The excess is lost, the balance. So here 0, here 204,000. Then disposal. Lower of cost NSP. Okay, which one is lower here? 1,200 is lower than 8,000, so 1,200. It doesn't matter, the date doesn't matter by the way. You might ask first he sold, then he purchased. No, first go with the purchase, then the disposal. So 1200 deduct from main pool. It does not go on allowance section, okay? So close the account. It will be 8800. Now comes written down allowance 88% at 8800 which is 1584 it's a form of allowance 1584 so you add here 7216 and 200 and sorry 205 584 this is tax written down value i write it clearly tax written down value carried forward this one is total allowances. Always write the subheadings, okay? Total allowances, tax written down, value carried forward. Very important. You are going to lose marks if you are not going to write it. And just you write the figure and come. So illustration 5 is over. Test your understanding 3 here only we are going to do it. Test tax written down value is now 21,000. So we'll change, we'll just change the figure. 21,000. And we'll just drop down one zero doesn't it is very easy we'll just change the figure from here we'll just change the figure okay now so he bought car which goes in the main pool. He has a car. Not qualifying. Okay, those things not qualifying for AIA or FYA, you can write it on your own. 24,000. Then we have qualifying for AIA plant and machinery. How much? 184,500. So AIA also you can deduct because it's 1 million is the limit. So here it will be 0. Here also 184,500. Then here the amount remaining here is what 45,000. From 45,000, you have two disposal here. One, we have just I have just circled it 12,400 and 600 because they are lower. Okay, so here. 12,400 plant when is 600 is the lower so amount is 32,000 from 32,000 WDA then it is 5,760 this is an allowance 5,760 so here total allowance will be 190,260 and here 26 26 240 is the tax written down value carry forward next we have is balancing charges what is balancing charges See, the basic idea of capital allowance is that business will obtain relief 
for the actual cost of an asset to a business over a time. Okay, cost less the sale proceed if any. Now, initially, asset is put into a pool at its original cost. But if there is any disposal from that pool, and let's say sale proceed exceeds the balance brought forward, what happens? If the sale proceed is more than the balance brought forward, the pool balance will become negative. Why? Because allowances exceeding the net cost have been claimed in the past. You might have already claimed it. The allowances. So the negative amount is equal to the excess allowance previously given. What happens? Now this will be recovered and charged to tax by means of a balancing charge. Remember, whatever is your amount of uh, actual cost of the asset only, you can claim capital allowance. But maybe in the past, you might have claimed excess allowance. Now that excess allowance will be charged to tax. They will recover somehow. Okay, how they will recover by charging tax to that excess. And this is this excess is known as balancing charge. BC. So what happens? Balancing charge will reduce your capital allowance claim for the period. And if there is an overall net balancing charge, it is added to the tax adjusted trading profit. What happens when it's a capital allowance? We deduct it. We deduct from tax adjusted trading profit and then charge tax, right? But if there's a balance in charge, because it will be added to tax, you add it to the tax adjusted trading profit. Does it make sense now? Because on tax adjusted trading profit, we are going to charge tax. Add balance in charge also to that profit and charge tax. Now let's do a question before we move on to our next subtopic that is when you seize the trade, what happens? Test your understanding for. Here you have two requirements. A with the additions. B without the addition, what would be the impact? This is a question on balancing charge. Okay, so here he has made two purchases and he have sold off one machinery. He has purchased a zero emission car for 14,000 and purchased a equipment for 23,500. He sold machinery for 12,100, which was originally cost 26,000. Remember, whenever there's a disposal, we have to see the lower of the cost and the sale proceed. So the lower is this compared to 26,000. And the tax written down value is 11,000, which is brought forward. So first we'll calculate capital allowance with all this and in B, explain what would happen you have to just explain not calculate what would happen if they were they have made no addition in the year so let's quickly do a how we normally used to make our tables to calculate capital allowance so now we will be making three columns and this is the inside one. This is the main pool. Okay. And the allowance column. Excel will let you do these things very easily since you are going to give your exam in a CV platform. Now, always you have to start with TWDV brought forward, which is 11,000. This 11,000 will go into the main pool. That's it. Next, additions qualifying for AIA. Which one qualifies for AIA? Only the equipment, 23,500. So plant and machinery, 23,500 will qualify for AIA. Then AIA, remember the maximum limit is 1 million, but you can only take 23,500. So this balance becomes zero. And 23,500 will also go into the allowance section. Next, we have disposal. Remember the new zero emission car. Okay. 
this additions qualifies for FYA. This will have no impact because you will get the FYA 100%. Okay. So here, okay, okay, we'll write the car as well 14,000. Okay. Car 14,000. So 14,000 is the car we are going to get FYA because it's a new and it's a zero emission car. There is no AIA for it. The zero. Even this 14,000 is an allowance. You must have often seen that this is written at the end after taking disposal, but it's okay. You can write it before also. Now, disposal. Remember disposal, we have to take lower. So 12,100. Okay. Taking 12,100. Now. So if you take, and that goes in the main pool. So 11,000 minus 12,100 is a negative figure. 1,100. Okay. So how much will be the balancing charge? There's a balancing charge now. Why? Because this is a negative figure. When your tax written down value is less than your disposal, there is a balancing charge. Balancing charge will be up to this amount, the difference. So it's 1100. This is your balancing charge. This 1100 will go here. Remember, because of balancing charge, your capital allowance, your allowances will be reduced. That's why I have put a bracket. This will not be added to the allowance. This will be deducted from allowance. Understanding. So finally, this will be zero because it has been disposed of. So now, tax written down value carried forward will be zero. There is no no value. But total allowance, when you are taking the total allowance, you are adding twenty three five hundred with fourteen thousand and deducting one thousand one hundred, and you are getting a balance of. That is 6400. Okay. So that's it for A. Now for B, coming to B, they told explain if there were no if there were no two additions. What were the two additions? One was this 23500, one was this 14,000. So anyway, it is zero, right? So that in that case, we already have the tax written down value of 11,000, deduct the disposal you will be having a balance in charge of 1100 okay with that you will only be left with a balancing charge of 1100 so you have to write this clearly there will be no aia since no equipment you have purchased or fya because no car you have purchased okay balancing charge is 1100 no aia or fya will be there and what you have to do this would be added remember this balancing charge bc i'm writing short form don't write bc in your exam okay write balancing charge would be added to what gun vos tax adjusted trading profit tax adjusted this is the rule always balance in charge you add with the tax adjusted trading profit why you add because you have to pay tax on that balancing charge it's taxable that's why now let's coming to the next subtopic that is cessation of trade what if you completely close your trade that time, how do you claim for the allowance? So when a business is permanently discontinued, remember, there is no AIA, no WDA, no FYA in the final period of account. I repeat, when you're permanently disclosing your business, uh, discontinuing your business, there is no AIA, no WDA, no FYA for the final period of account. That's why, when you are seizing, 
okay the final period to the date of cessation you are not going to compute any capital allowance not required but instead you have to do the following number one add any additions in the final period do not calculate AIA, WD, FYA. Deduct any disposal in the final period and any sale proceed on the ultimate disposal of plant and machinery association. 4. Calculate a balancing charge or a balancing allowance. Balancing charge I have covered in the previous slide. We have done a question. Balancing allowance, we will be doing it in the next slide. Fifth. There should not be any balances carried forward at the end of the trade. Obviously, when you're closing the trade, how can you carry forward any balance, right? Make sense? Now, let's move on to the next slide with the balancing allowance. Balancing allowance, when you're seizing, still it is possible that there are some balance of unrelieved expenditure in that pool. For that, a business can claim a relief which is known as balancing allowance. Remember, there are so many allowances, first year allowance, annual investment allowance, written down allowance. Same way, we have another additional allowance known as balancing allowance. This is for those expenditure which has not been relieved. It's unrelieved. So you can claim relief for it. It is known as balancing allowance. Now, this is the only time a balancing allowance will arise in the main pool or special rate pool. We have not covered special rate pool. This is a no, another pool known as special rate pool and the percentages are different for that pool. For main pool is 18% WDA. Okay. So in this two, balancing allowance can arise. Balancing allowance will only rise when you are seizing the trade. It is not possible any other time. Next. Balancing allowance is the excess of the pool balance at the end of the final period of account over the sale proceed received on all disposal. Okay. Now, cars. Before we move on to the car, let's do questions on balancing allowance. Test your understanding five. This question is about balancing allowance. Earlier question was on balancing charge. Everything is same except it is now reversed. In balancing charge, what we used to do will be the opposite in what we do for balancing allowance. Now, let's quickly do this question here. They prepare account to 31st March every year, but they decided to cease the trade on 31st December 2023. Okay, so on this date, he has sold a plant for 320 originally purchased for 2000 so we have to take the lower of the cost and the disposal proceed lower is 320 next on 10th september he plant purchased a plant for 4000 okay after completing he have received 5400 no item was sold for more than his original cost so they have not given the cost so you have to assume this is the lower amount lower of the sales proceed and cost okay now tax written down value brought forward on 1st of april 2022 was this so compute capital allowance for year ended 31st march 2023 and period ended 31st december 2023 why period this is the final period of account we have decided to cease now let's quickly do this so here will make up the table okay we have main pool and we have allowances okay now brought forward tax written down value brought forward this is for year ended please write the periods 31st march 2023 we have to make for two periods okay no issue will be here. The main pool it was 9000. This one, so 9000 is the amount. Remember, you have sold it on 21st of Feb. This one you have purchased on September 10th of September. So, for year ended 31st March 2023, this one only falls. The first transaction, second transaction falls in the 
next period that is the final period so you only have to write the disposal not this time you can't add the purchase because final period of account is different it does not fall in this period you understanding that's why it's not similar like previous question how we are used to add purchase and then take the disposal at the end no so here 320 you deduct then 8680 remember here there is no FYA there is no WD I mean uh, AIA because you have just disposed you haven't purchased anything but since year end of 31st March 2023 is not the final period of account you still can claim WDA at 18% on 8680 so it will be 1562 this will go in the allowance section as well 1562 and when you deduct it's 7118 so final allowance will be 1562 only and this is tax written down value carried forward this is total allowance total allowances now till here i know you will be able to understand the next one is it's not a full year it's just a period and a few months only period ended that means from march to december why because they have ceased trading on 31st december 2023 you can't write a year ended 31st march 2024 before that only they have ceased so from april to december april may june july august september october november december for nine months right here you have to add what do you have to add a plant they have purchased a plant 4000 this was purchased on september it falls in this period from march to december period here so plant and machinery they have purchased 4000 goes in the main pool remember he can't claim any aia for this 4000 because this is in the final period of account okay no aia or fya so just 4000 so this 4000 will be added with this 7118 which is brought forward from the previous year which will be 11118 now there was a disposal which you need to deduct how much 5400 because when you, when you have sold your business this much you have received for plant and machinery 5400 5718 so this is the amount it's a it's a positive okay earlier we had a negative balance that's why there's a balancing charge now it's a positive it's a balancing allowance remember when you're seizing you can carry carry forward any balance so this needs to be zero your tax written down value needs to be zero there is no nothing to be carried forward so because this is zero this needs to be 5718 only so your balancing allowance is just the difference it's the same as your total amount 5718 only this 5718 is taken in the same way how you take any other allowance like FYA, WDA, AIA same way will be added with the, in the allowance column so this year 5718 is the total allowance for the final period nothing to be carried forward in the final period only total allowance okay and how do you treat balancing allowance remember when it was a balancing charge we deduct sorry we added with tax adjusted trading profit now it's a balancing allowance will deduct this from tax adjusted trading profit like how we deduct any allowances from tax adjusted trading profit balancing allowance also will deduct from tax adjusted trading profit now we have moved to cars treatment of cars depends on the co2 emission okay so on one side i have co2 emission on the other side how you will be trading it in the capital allowance first if it is zero emission then next category is 1 to 50 the other one is more than 50 if it is zero 
and if it is purchased new eligible for 100% FYA first year allowance we have done lots of questions on this in fact almost every question I have attempted till now has this section purchase new zero emission purchase new zero emission and we have claimed FYA next if it is purchased second hand that means not new but zero emission it, it is treated like a hybrid electric car 1 to 50 it goes in the main pool but it does not qualify for AIA or FYA this category also we have done and more than 50 goes in the special rate pool still does not qualify for AIA or FYA this the last section we have not yet covered because we have to cover the special rate pool first before covering more than 50 okay now you need to know two things first if a car is used part of the car is used for the private use by the owner of the business not employees owner of the business does not matter whatever the level of emission but private use was there of the car it is dealt separately my next section is in fact on that only then remember AIA is not available on any type of car so now let's quickly do question on cars illustration six cars so here we need to calculate capital allowance for two years to 31st March 2025 first one to 31st March year ended 2024 and then 31st March 2025 two separate years so if you see the transaction the first one falls in 2024 31st March 2024 and this two falls in 31st March 2025 that's why we need to separate the first from the last two and tax written down value is 21200 then we have purchased a car with zero to emission 49 for 26600 remember the moment you see read information you need to classify in your mind that this goes to which pool then which type of allowance is available since this is co2 emission between 1 to 50 remember that table it's 1 to 50 so no FYA no AIA this goes in the main pool first classify this 2600 next plant and machinery 11,000 AIA is available for plant and machinery then we have sold equipment 9400 cost 15,000 lower of this two okay so this is sorted out now let's quickly do this so now we will have the three one is for the inside working main pool and allowance so here we have then we have main pool then we have allowance so here first one is year ended 31st march 2024 tax written down value brought forward is 21200 goes in the main pool then we already have car which we have purchased which is between 1 to 50 car 150 so it goes in the main pool 2600 then we add it it's 41 800 then we can only claim wdo since we have already purchased a car no ai no fy but wda we can claim 18 percent on 41 800 which is 7524 this is an allowance so in the allowance column also we'll write 752 Four. Now deduct 34276. 34276 is the tax written down value carried forward and total allowances is 7524 only. Okay, next we have for the next period year ended 31st march 2025 so here we have one addition and one deduction 
we have plant and machinery plant and machinery for 11000 in the inside column i will write it is qualified for aia so we'll deduct 11000 this 11000 here we'll be having zero in the main pool but in the allowance column also we'll add 11000 then we have a disposal which is the lower of the two so it was 9400 sorry 9400 from the main pool remember so this we have already 34276 deduct 9400 we have 24876 in the pool okay now we can claim wda 18% on 24,876, which is 4478. 4478 will go in the allowance column also. 2398. This is tax written down value carried forward. And with 11,000, you will add 4478. So 15478 is the total allowance. TA. Now, the next question test to understanding six. Here, here we only have for one period, not two. So we have two purchased. We have purchased three things, in fact. One plan for this much, which is more than AIA. AIA balance is one million. Then we purchased two new car, one with a zero to emission of 44. For 18,600, the other one is with zero emission for 13,000. And already we have a balance 48,100. Then we sold a plant for 4,600. This is the lower. So this is very quickly we can do it. Okay. So let's do that. Okay. We have main pool. Then we have allowance. Remember, when we finish all the other pools, we are going to have two, three, four types of separate columns. Okay. So, brought forward. Brought forward balances 48,100. Then we have car between 1 to 50. Remember, it will not, it, which will not qualify for any AIA or FYA. will go in the main pool. Which one? This 18,600 will go in the main pool. Why? Because this one is zero. CO2 emission. First, it is zero and it's a new car. Both are new car, but one is with zero emission. So, this 13,000 will be qualified for FYA. That's why we'll not write it here. Don't add the two cars. One which qualifies for FYA needs to be separated from which one which does not qualify for FYA. You need to keep it in the category. So, 18,600. Then we have plant and machinery. How much? 103. 1, 3, but AI is only up to 1 million. We still have some excess, which is 3,300. So 1 million will be the allowance. Then we have, we, we disposed. 4,600, the lower. Then we have an amount of 65,400. We need to claim WDA on that. Sixty-five four hundred, which is one one seven seven two. This one one seven seven two is also an allowance. Then we have zero emission car. New zero emission car okay which is 13000 i'll write in the insert column it will be qualified for 100 percent fya okay zero even this 13000 is allowance so the total is 53628 here here it is 1 million 24772 this is the total allowance this is the tax written down Carry it forward.
Next, remember I told you sometimes we might use an asset with private, right? We might have a private use. But remember, this rule is only for the owner of the business, not employee. If it's employee, then it is taken as a benefit, which we have covered in employment income, where we have covered benefits, various types of benefits. Here, this is different, okay? So when an asset is used by the owner of the business, let's say partly for business and partly for private purpose, only the business portion you can claim for capital allowance, not the private part. So only the business portion is allowable for capital allowance and only that is available as a tax deduction. Following rule, you must take into account when there's a private use. First, if you are using an asset privately, okay, you don't bring it in the main pool. Rather, there's a separate pool, which is known as private use column. Next, AIA, FYA, WDA, on that asset is based on its full cost. You don't take private portion separately and business portion separately and then claim AIA, FYA, WDA, full cost you take. Then, after you take the relevant allowance, whether AIA, FYA, or WDA, it depends. If it's a car, then it's FYA. If it's a plant and machinery, then you might claim AIA. That's why we told out of this, whichever is on the asset, you take in the full cost. Then only the business proportion of that allowance you can deduct from the taxable trading profit. Now, note a business can always choose the expenditure again, which they are going to claim their AIA. They can choose the order on which one they are going to claim the AIA first. Business has that choice if applicable, but it is most beneficial. Remember this for your exam. This, this is a tax planning, okay? It is most beneficial if AI is allocated against main pool first, rather than the special rate or the private use. Why? There's a reason why, because main pool has 18% WDA, 18%, whereas special rate pool only has 6%. Or 8%, I, I suppose. 6%, yes. Why? Because if, we, if you take it from the private use, remember, only the business, even if you have used, because since you are using it for the private use, only the business proportion only you can claim the AIA. So it's better to take it from the main pool first. But in exam, assets most commonly used for private purposes are cars. So you don't have to worry about claiming AIA or not because anyway, cars are not eligible for AIA. So that thing is removed. It is made easier for you. Cars with private use are always treated separately. Mostly it is the cars that they give for your exam that there's a private use of the car compared to plant or machinery or any other asset. So cars with private use are always treated separately and you don't take it in the main pool. Regardless of their CO2 emission, does not matter whatever their CO2 emission is, whether it is zero, whether it is one to 50 or more than 50. Wherever it is a private use, it is taken separately. Now, when you are disposing the private use asset, there is a balancing adjustment. You compare the sale proceed with the tax return down value. And if the sale proceed is more than the tax return down value, there's a balancing charge. And if it's the other way around, sale proceed is less than tax return down value, there's a balancing allowance. We have done question on this, right? We have checked. We have done a question on both balancing charge and balancing allowance. So that should not be a problem for you. You should be knowing whether there's a balancing allowance or the difference is a balancing charge. Now, after balancing adjustment is done, remember this is only on disposal. You will have a balancing allowance or a charge. If there's no disposal, there is no balancing allowance or charge. It cannot arise. Okay. After balancing adjustment is done, the amount included in the total allowance column is reduced to the business proportion. Whatever the total allowance you have done, take it only the business proportion out of it. And 
this rules of taking the proportion business proportion only applies if there's a private use by the owner of the business if there's no private use nothing to worry but as i told you private use of an asset by an employee will have no effect to the business owner's entitlement of full capital allowance even if employee has used the asset privately remember business owner will still get the full capital allowance because it has no impact so now let's do question we have two questions here illustration 7 and test you understanding 7 both with a similar type of question this question i'm going to show you on excel how to do it because in your real exam you'll be using excel and it's much convenient more need for you to see my workings when i'm doing it in excel versus me writing it okay and it takes a lot of time also while excel will do things very fast calculations will be done very quickly and you will learn the techniques okay on how to do it on excel because ultimately you have to do it on excel so now both the questions involve a private use by the owner of the business okay so the type of question is same where they have purchased some plant some car with different emissions and they have sold and they have used a private so and also the tax written down value brought forward is given for both illustration 7 and test your understanding 7 is the same it's just the figures are changed so we'll quickly do the capital allowance for both now since we don't have any special rate pool item we are going to have four separate columns one is main pool one is private use one is business use and allowance uh, and one of course for description so this column first we'll do illustration 7 and on that we'll do test understanding 7 so first column I will keep for description this one and this one I will keep for the inside workings and this one I will label it as main pool okay and I will keep this bold and center now this one private use okay this is for car so private use i will write this i will wrap text okay now business use whenever you have private use keep a separate column for business use a wrap text and then we have allowances this also wrap text just okay now so now this one of course the pound sound pound sign you can add it on your own now first one will be tax written down value brought forward okay i hope you can see the font the font size is okay that's why i didn't make it too small not too big okay now this this 11,700 okay wait a minute pin and okay so this 11,700 mm, will go in the main pool okay 11,700 I will keep everything as center okay if i want to make all this column in the center looks better right now next next will be additions not qualifying for aia additions not qualifying for AIA this I will wrap text okay 
how much? So this is just a subheading. Okay, this is just a survey under nothing you will write here. Under this you will write car. When you write car, just writing car is not enough. To show that it's not qualified for AIA, you need to write the range, CO2 emission range, CO2 between 1 to 50 grams per kilometer. This I will wrap text, okay? So this is okay. CO2 emission between 1 to 50. This will not qualify for AIA. What's next? Private use car. Even private use car will not qualify for AIA. Then we have additions qualifying for AIA. This I will just copy paste here. I will just remove the not. See? Additions qualifying for AIA. Which is plant and I will just write PNM, plant and machinery. Then the AIA amount. Then since I've disposed here, I know this question, I've read it, I know there's a disposal. So next will be, what's next? Disposal. Okay, there's a disposal. When you write disposal, always write in the bracket, lower of, lower of cost, and SP that is selling proceed, sale proceed. This will be wrap text. Okay. Now, next all I'll write later, but first we'll fill this one car. Do we have a car between 1 to 50? Yes, 45 grams, 19,000. This will go in the main pool. First drop the columns like this, then it's easier to fill uh, in the columns. Then we have private use, which is for 9400 do not apportion now okay private use you know is 45 percent that means business use will be 55 percent don't apportion now just write the full amount in the private use section 9400 then we have plant and machinery 18500 this will qualify for aia so we'll write here we'll write in the inside column showing the workings 18500 okay then AIA is 18,500, we can claim. Minus 18,500, it needs to be minus, because it will be deducted. Okay, or you can just show bracket. Automatically, it will be taken as a minus figure. Remember, this 18,500 will also go in the allowance. The moment you write here, don't forget in the allowance, please check that you are putting it in the same column. Sometimes what happens, students might mistakenly put it here and check the column is business use. So it has to be in the allowance column and it needs to be in the correct row, this one, where you write AIA. Same line, it needs to be in the same line. Don't write below or up, okay, 18,500. Here it will not be deducted. Here is allowance. You will add all the allowance at the end. Then disposal, how much? Sold machinery for 8,500, you purchase for 18,000. So 8,500 is the lower. So here, and you will deduct it from the main pool. So minus 8,500. Done. Now, add up all the columns. You can just use the sum function here, equal to sum function. That's it. So just drag this. Enter. Okay, I think, no, sorry. When I've taken the sum function, I have not taken the entire. I'll take from here. Wait, needs to put a bracket, then sum function. 
enter i can just drag it to the other cell no need to write for here and this one now remember wda okay WDA 18% on this amount. Okay, so now when you do here. Just press this into 18%. Enter. Enter. This will be deducted, remember. So just put a minus next to it to make it minus. Enter. Enough. Okay. Then, when you are taking WDA from this private use, also take the entire amount 18%. So just drag it to the cell okay 18 percent slash 9400 done now remember okay Wait, we'll put it in this column in order for you to not lead you to confusion we'll do this here copy paste here just we'll change the figure to 9400 then we'll do it here this just put a minus figure into 18% enter. You see now? Better to put it down like this. Don't put it in the same line. For main pull, put WDA one line above the WDA of the private use. Then remember, business use is 55%. You see, business use column. Just put the percentage there. That's it. 55%. And now, and this you will take here. This. 3996 and here you will just take this remember since this is negative you have to make this into positive okay just multiply it by this percentage put it in bracket and since you know negative when you multiply a negative by negative it becomes a positive so just put a minus figure outside the bracket it will be converted into a positive figure you see here if I have not taken the minus outside the bracket, it would be showing it minus into 55. So it, this would be a minus figure. Then it would be a problematic for you. And please round it up to the whole number. How will you do it? Just simply go here. And go here. You see? 931. Round all your number to whole number. It's easier and more convenient. Now, tax, I can write here, tax written down value carried forward. Just use the sum function. Enter. Here when you do, you can't carry forward because I have not taken this cell. Here we have this cell. And here, take all this three, enter. Go here, drop down the decimals. And you see, 
but this amount when you're writing it here make sure you write here copy paste see what happened you can't copy paste because this cell has a function to it so when you're copying it with a function go here just paste Place the value when you place the value, the original value will come again. You need to drop down the zeros. Okay, this column is total allowance. Total allowances. You see, you see now, there's two other test written down value from the private use and the main pool. This one is a total allowances remember the tax written down value okay of the private use this section when you're using here wda you reduce this 1692 by from 9400 right you reduce the entire amount full amount of wda is reduced from twdv of the private use but when you're taking it in the capital allowance section only the business proportion that is only 55 percent of this wda you can claim as an allowance and only this you can reduce from your trading profit understood only this much 931 not 1692 but for tax written down value carried forward you reduce this entire amount from the amount in the private use with this knowledge we are going to do test your understanding seven in the same table so, so that I don't have to draw the table again. Okay. Now I will just change the figure. You see test understanding 2. Tax written down this time is 21,200. We purchased a plant 6,600. Emission of 43, 1,700. We sold it for 9,4 and 12 we purchased. So, 9,400. We purchased a car with 40% private use. That means 60 is the business use for 10,600. Then we purchased a new zero, new car with zero emission for 11,750. The addition is this one, the last one. This time we'll have FYA also for the last car. That's the only difference. So we'll use the same table and we'll quickly do it. This time the amount is 21,200. Then this time the car is in the main pool, 17,000. We'll did take this amount out between 1 to 50, 17,000. Then plant and machinery, this time it is how much? 6,600. So AIA is 6,600. Here also it will be 6,600 is the allowance. Then here the amount will be zero then here disposal is 9400 enter okay private use we have private use car is here 10600 enter So here, what is said? Ah, this 19,000 has to be deducted. And so you see, automatically this is added, uh, this is adjusted. You don't have to keep on adding every time. Now, WDA will be on this amount. Since I've written a text, that's why it's not taking it. 28,800. Yeah, it's 5.8. This is automatically taken. And here, this time, it will be 60%. So automatically, this is adjusted. They have taken the 60%. And this time, it is 5.184. Till here, you have understood. I know that. Now the only one is, which is added here is after this.
this is 10,600. You need to add another cell here and write additions. Qualifying for FYA. Okay. Then another column. Sorry, row. You need to add. It is new zero emission car. How much? The new zero emission car in the inside column you will write 11750, the last one. Then FYA is 100%. You will show it's 100%. 11750. This is minus. Then here you will write 11750. Because this is a allowance. So now here will be zero. So how much now? Here there's a difference, okay. You need to take the sum function and add all this. Wait. Sum function this. This at so twenty four six seventy nine is the total allowance, and there are four allowances: FYA, WDA for private use, and WDA for the main pool, and the AIA. Now we have moved to special rate pool. What is the special rate pool? This operates exactly in the same way how a main pool works. Okay. The only difference is percentage. WDA is 6% for a 12 month period rather than 18%. This are the qualifying expenditure which are eligible to go into a special rate pool. First one. Long life assets, integral features of a building or structure. Later on, we are going to go in depth into each of this qualifying expenditure. What are long life assets? What are integral features? Then, terminal insulation of a building, high emission car, emission which are above 50 grams. We have seen earlier, right, in that table for cars. We have dealt with two new car, zero emission, FYA. Then car between 1 to 50, our main pool, above 50 grams per kilogram goes in the special rate pool. Then long life asset. Long life asset are plant and machinery with both. Both means it should have both of these characteristics. If one of them is missing, it is not a long life asset. What are they? First one, total cost should exit 100,000. At least it has to be 100,000. If it's less than 100, it's not a long life asset. And this 100,000 is for a 12 month period. Why am I saying 12 month period? As we have seen earlier, we can have a period more than 12 months or less than 12 months. If it's more or less, we have to apportion this 100,000 accordingly. And expected working life should be 25 years or more. Long life, right? Long life. Then 
This 25 year working life is from the time the asset is first bought into use. First bought into use till the time it ceases to be capable of being used. That means it stops being used. You can't use it any longer. So you, it's not enough to just look at the expected life of the asset in the hands of the current owner. Expected life of an asset could be anything. But this 25 year working life, we take it from the time when asset is first bought into use till the date it is, it ceases to be capable of being used. Then examples are like aircraft. Aircraft is a long life asset. Why? It has an expected working life of more than 25 and cost is at least 100,000. So an aircraft used by an airline and agricultural equipment used by a farm, these are long life assets. Then when a business spends less than 100,000 per year on a long life asset, what happens? Then it goes, then it is treated as a normal addition, either to main pool or special rate pool, depending on the type of expenditure. Remember, the following cannot be classified as long life asset. Car. Cars are never long life asset. But if emissions are high, high emission means more than 50 grams, it goes in the special rate. Plant and machinery that are situated in a building that is used in a retail shop, for example, showroom, hotel, office, they are not long life asset. It is for commercial purpose we use it. Then, integral features of a building or structure. Remember, for building and structure, we have another allowance, separate allowance for that. So these are some integral, integral features means inside the building, these features will be there. So any expenses you incur on this integral feature are qualifying expenditure for special rate pool. It could be on electricity, lighting, it could be cold water system, space or water heating system, external solar shading, power system of ventilation, air cooling, air purification, lift, sclater, and moving walkways. These are integral features of a building. To construct any building, this cost comes along with it. You need it. Then, terminal insulation in all business buildings. Business buildings, okay, for commercial purpose, not residential. Except residential buildings in a property business is also included in the special rate pool. Remember, if it's for residential building, you can't take it it's not a business building. It does not come under special rate pool. Okay. But if it's a residential building for a purpose of property business. Okay. Except residential building in a property business. That is not taken in special rate pool. Other than that, all business buildings are in the special rate pool. That means terminal insulation for those business buildings. High emission car. Now. Remember, if the high emission car, that means more than 50 grams per kilometer of car is used by the owner, okay, some portion is private used, then the cost is added to a separate column, like how we have taken earlier, right, private use asset, same, for high emission also, we take it in the private use column, but WDEA will be 6%, not 18%, before adjusting for business use. AIA in the special rate pool. What about AIA? AIA is available against all expenditure except cars. We know this. And business can choose how they want to allocate this AIA. Same how we have for the main rate pool. Then, remember for tax planning, this is the most beneficial if you claim the AIA in this order. First, against main special rate pool. Okay, why? Because AIA is only eligible for 6% only. Sorry, 6% WDA. But main pool, it is up to 18%. Next, then second is main pool. Third is short life asset. What is short life asset? We'll cover shortly. Then private use asset. So make sure that you follow this order. Now let's do question. Illustration 8. Illustration 8, we have certain type of assets. And now we are going to have an additional pool known as special rate pool. But you need to identify out of this list which are which are in the main pool, which are in the special rate pool. Okay. So now 
in test and understanding 8, tax written down value is 43,000. Then we have certain expenditure. He have spent 1.8 million on new air conditioning system for the factory, which is expected to last 30 years. By looking at it, two conditions are satisfied. What is it? Spent at least 100,000 and more than 25 years. So it's a long life asset. Long life asset means the first expenditure will go in the special rate pool. Second, new computer and related software. 25 is for computer, 5,000 is software. They are plant and machinery. They are in the main pool. Together, 25 and 5, 30,000. Third expenditure, 115 on new packing machine, and they have also incurred 4,000 to alter the factory to accommodate the new machine. Remember, we went through some list earlier. Some expenditure are deemed to be plant and machinery. Okay, they are deemed by the statute, by the law. For example, software and when you are altering building, cost of altering the building to accommodate plant, it is deemed to be plant and machinery according to the statute. That's why we take them also in plant and machinery. So 115 plus 4, 119,000. This also will be in the main pool. Okay. And then car. It's a new car, but with emission of more than 50, that means high emission. Even this 28,000 will go in the special rate pool. Then he has sold the machinery for 10,000. Original cost was 60,000. We have to take the lower of the two, that means at 10,000. Now you need to cap calculate the capital allowance. So this table, I've used it earlier for illustration seven and test understanding seven. That's why you can see some workings are here, but this needs to be changed. Okay, this will be changed. I'm using the same format with the changes, of course. So now, this is the inside column. Then I'm going to have the main pool. No private use was here. So this I will change to a special rate pool. Okay. Then this column I can deduct. I mean, and just have the allowance. So here, brought forward balance will go in the main pool 43,000. Okay, then additions not qualifying for AIA or FYA. Car. So car, this time we have more than 50. Okay. CO2 emission more than 50 grams. That means high emission car. So this will go in the special rate pool, 28,000. Next, this time we have long life asset. The first one, 1.8 million, right? So this long life asset will be 1,008,000. We'll do the working inside. Next, how much AI you can claim? See, when you are claiming AIA, decide against what you are going to claim. As we have seen in the earlier slide, it is beneficial to first claim against special rate. That's why we are going to claim against this 1.8 million rather than main pool. So just go here and insert another row. Okay. Now, this is qualifying for AIA, remember. This needs to be added here. This just add another. So wait a minute, just. Paste. So additions qualifying for AI is the long life asset. Then AIA. The entire A of 1 million will go here. Just put minus, minus, done. So 
So here in the special rate pool, just go here, 8000 the difference, or you can just perform the sum function. And 8000 will go. Sorry, this will not go in the main pool. This will go in the special rate pool this time. Just paste. Just deduct from. It will not come here because you need to do the, do, do the sum function here. Done. 8000. Okay. That means since we have utilized AIA entirely against the special rate pool, we have no AIA to claim against the main, pool, main rate pool expenditure. Then we have computer and software. Computer and software together, 30,000. Then we have machine, machine together 19,000, 15 and 4,000, sorry 119,000. So together if you add, okay. How much? Just do the sum function. 30 and 119, it's 149,000. There's no AIA to claim. And this 149,000 will go in the main pool. Just copy, paste. Okay, when you're going for copy paste, copy, paste the value. Okay, 149,000 under main pool. Always check whether it's in the correct column or not. And since we have charged 1 million here, immediately in the allowance, we will write 1 million. Okay. Now, what's next? Disposal. Disposal lower. So lower is from main pool you will deduct. 10,000 minus 10,000. Then do the sum function. On 39. Sorry, it's some function you have to take the entire amount from here enter 182,000 just copy paste it here that is 6,000 you see now What's next? WDA. Right? WDA 18% on this amount. 182,000. Eighteen percent multiply by this amount. This needs to be deducted. Minus. And on the next line, okay, just take 32760, right? This is a WD, it will go in the allowance section 32760. Now, same. Just Copy paste it here. Rather than 18%, take 6% from special rate pool 
and on 36,000. Because in the special rate pool item, we have 36,000. Just go and calculate here 6% into 36. Sorry, it will be here. To 160 and this will be minus figure so just put a minus before six percent then 2160 will go in the allowance now here just delete this So here, just perform the sum function. Okay. The sum is done. And here, again a sum function. Add all the allowance this three allowance you need to put an equal sign and so this is the total allowance 1034 920 just add here you see this are the two tax written down value carried forward and the total allowance of this much next is the small pull wda where the balance immediately before the calculation of wda is whether on the main pool or special rate pool is thousand or less then the balance can be claimed as a WDA and written off in that year. Note that this 1000 limit is for 12 month period of account. If the period is less than 12 months or more than 12 months, you have to adjust the 1000 limit. If it is therefore applied proportionately for long and short period of account, this claim is optional, remember. So the taxpayer will normally want to claim the maximum allowance that is available and reduce the balance on the pool to the nail. That should be the motive of any taxpayer. Now let's do a question on small pool WD. Test your understanding eight. In test your understanding eight, we have main pool, special rate pool, private use. Okay, so let's read the question. This time we have tax written down value on both the pools. That is on main pool, we have 10,800 and special rate pool, we have 16,600. So let's quickly fill this in the right column. Then we have purchased a new office furniture for 89,800. Okay. This is an expenditure which is qualifying for AIA, right? Office furniture. So O F eighty nine eight hundred. I will do the working inside first. Since we have not claimed all the expenditure yet, we still don't know how much of AIA we need to claim. But we know it's eligible for AIA. That's why we'll write it under the heading qualifying for AIA. 898,800. We'll keep this space. Then we have a new car which we purchased. Emission is 140. That means it's a high emission car and it will go in the special rate pool for 12,600. So this 12,600 will go in the private use, not in the special rate because we have used privately. Even if it's a special rate or main pool, the moment private use is done, 
it's in the private use column so and remember it comes under additions not qualifying for aai or foia the car okay private use car private use high emission car private use high emission car will go in the private use how much 12600 it does not qualify for aia or fya how much is the private use 20 percent that means 80 percent is business use but will not take care about the percentage right now we will take it when we calculate wda next so two things are done then we installed a new what a uh, new heating system in the business premises for 40 and new lighting system for 70. remember both are integral feature even they will qualify for aia so both 40 and 70 together makes 110,000. Okay. Integral features 110,000. Remember, this 110,000 will, it's in the special rate. Okay, this integral feature is in the special rate. That's why I put it first. So when we claim AIA, two items only can claim AIA. One is integral, integral feature, the other one is office furniture. But since office furniture is in the main pool, first we'll take from the special rate pool. Then whatever is remaining, we'll take from office furniture. Okay, so we need to add another row integral feature AIA so up to 110,000 AIA fully we can claim from special rate pool minus 110,000 done so this 110,000 is an allowance we'll add it in the allowance column here our first allowance then we have office furniture but here we can't claim the entire amount so, so just entire amount is 1 million 1 2 3 out of this we have claimed see if we minus this is a minus figure it will be add a uh, minus minus becomes plus so just what are you going to do you are going to add add back with this figure to check the difference this is the difference okay out of 110 890,000 more you can claim of AIA from this office furniture so this i will put minus sorry this if, if i put minus so since i know the difference is 890000 i'm going to put minus 890000 just make things easier okay so 890000 again is an allowance which i can claim 890000 now in the special rate pool there is zero nothing goes 110 goes entirely but in the main pool 898 minus 890,000 is 8,800 the difference just do the sum function and find the difference between this two okay it is 8,800 then we have a disposal which is the lower of the two we had a disposal here she sold office equipment for 18,700 bought for 28 so 18700 is the disposal amount okay disposal 18700 from main pool minus 18700 after that just do the function just do the sum function to find the amount in each pool okay no. some functions from here 900 just keep doing 
drag it to the other cell. Okay. Now, sixteen six hundred and twelve six hundred. Now, remember this allowance. Okay, this nine hundred is less than thousand. Remember, we have a small pool WDA which says that if it's less than one thousand, we can write down the entire amount, known as small pool WDA, either from special or main pool. So we'll deduct the entire amount rather than applying eighteen percent to it. Small pool WDA. Okay, small pool WDA. So entire nine hundred, we can reduce. Then here, this uh, I will bring forward here. Six percent first fill. So since nothing we have in the main pool, nine hundred minus nine hundred is zero. We have two in the special rate. The, this one and the private use. Both are at the special rate because this was a high emission car which was used for private use. So six percent into sixteen six hundred, and this one also will be six percent into twelve six hundred. Then, then this one is nothing. So here we'll take six percent into this amount. Enter here. Sorry, here we'll take this amount into six percent. Enter. But this will be minus. So just take a minus figure. After an equal sign, just put a minus. Then the number becomes automatically negative. Remember, private uses. You get when you are reducing the amount to get the tax written down value, you deduct the entire amount. But when we are taking in the allowance section, we are only taking up to the business percentage. Private use was twenty, so business is eighty percent. So now we are going to take this into this. Remember, we need this. Plus, so just put a minus, so that this amount becomes plus. Just round it up to whole number, six hundred and five. Now, it's a sum function. You see. And here the total allowance will be the sum function of all this. Sorry, even this will be there. Nine hundred. See, I forgot to add the small pool allowance in the allowance section, and even WDA this one nine nine six. You need to put it. This is a very common mistake which students often do. So add up the total allowance section, put the sum function, and take all this and enter. Now I'm going to round this to whole number. Drop down the decimals. So now it is one thousand two million five hundred and one. Short life assets. Short life asset election exists to enable business to accelerate capital allowances on certain qualifying expenditure. Let's see what are those qualifying expenditure. Remember, for the purpose of your exam, these are the qualifying expenditure on all plant and machinery without car will go in the main pool. Then, where? There is an intention to sell or scrap the asset within eight years. Remember the years, okay? Within eight years of the end of the chargeable period of accusation. That means when you have acquired, and within eight years after that, 
if you have decided to sell or scrap the asset it's a short life asset next this are the process for computation if you make the election these are the steps you have to take each short life asset is put into a separate column like how we have for private use main pool special rate pool like guys for short life asset we have a separate pool separate column okay so when you have disposed okay on disposal within 8 years we know that there is a separate balancing allowance or charge earlier we went through disposal right when we dispose an asset either we are going to get a balancing allowance or a charge even a short life asset since we are going to put it in a separate column even when we dispose that we are going to have a separate balancing allowance or charge this balancing allowance or charge is going to be kept separate from the other the main pool or special rate pool balancing allowance or charge now election remember the election must be made to enable assets to be treated separately as short life asset if you don't make this election it will be put into the uh, either the main pool or the special rate pool it will go into that category but if you make this election this will be uh, then this will be known as short life asset in other words it is known as de pooling you are not pooling the assets together you are de pooling them keeping them separate from the pool now remember when can you make this election there's a fixed date and you need to remember this date in tax very important is the dates when election could be made by when you have to report like that so the election must be made by the first anniversary of 31st jan following the end of the tax in which the period of account which includes accusation ends what does it mean I know it's a long sentence, but what does it mean? Just break this into pieces. Following the end of the tax year and visa period of account, which includes accusation ends. See, when you have acquired an asset, okay, it will be the first anniversary. First anniversary means twelve months, okay. Twelve months from that date, it will be thirty first Jan only. First anniversary of thirty first Jan. Following the end of the tax year, it could be any tax year that you have got. In the next okay 31st jan we'll see questions where we are going to deal with dates now let us move on to next let's say you have not made any disposal within the 8 years then what then any unrelieved balance is transferred to the main pool again right then the transfer takes place in the first chargeable period following the 8 year anniversary after the 8 years goes then the on in the 9th year you are going to make this transfer then note that aia is also available against short life assets and business can choose on in which order to uh, take aia from but remember if eligible for aia then there is no expenditure left to depool and the short life asset election will not be made right if you make the short life asset election you can you are not eligible for aia the minute you are eligible for aia you can't claim for short life asset both can't go together you can't have short life asset election and aia together it should be one of the two now if the expenditure is more than 1 million you are eligible for aia okay and also it is advantageous for you to claim ai against the main pool rather than other right rather than short life asset and for the short life asset election to be made let's say you have an expenditure of 1 million for a short life asset it is advisable to go for ai rather than going for a short life asset election okay now expenditure in excess of aia that is de pooled is eligible for wda yes this is for short life asset i am talking about not any other asset so any short life asset where expenditure is more than the aia the 1 million remember and if it's de pooled it is eligible for wda 
so it is advantageous to make the election if it is anticipated that balancing allowance will arise within eight years following the chargeable rate of accusation that means if you predict you are going to have a balancing allowance go for the election balancing allowance not balancing charge why if it's a balancing charge you have to pay the additional tax balancing allowance is another form of capital allowance so it's good for you so if you are going to anticipate that you are going to have an allowance within eight years that means when you are going to make the sale within the eight years go for the elections better to go for the election but if not covered by aia it is recommended that short life treatment is taken but only if it is expected that balancing allowance can be accelerated it is not advantageous to accelerate a balancing charge let's say if you have a balancing allowance already and if you can increase the balancing allowance go for the election it's good if you can't it's not good don't go for the election if there's a balancing charge or don't accelerate don't increase the balancing charge it's not advantageous so now let's do question illustration 9 short life asset this question is asking you two requirements one cap calculate capital allowance without the short life election and the other one is capital allowance with short life election why because they told whether or not okay whether or not an election to treat a new machine as a short life asset would be beneficial to know whether it is beneficial you need to show with election and without election the capital allowance so here we have tax written down value on the main pool 15000 then he has acquired new machine for 10000 new plant for 1.2 million and within two years she decided to sell the machine for 1750 very short information there is no private use there is no special rate pool so we can we don't need those pools okay we only need two pools one main pool and the other one is the allowance so we'll quickly take this out we'll delete this column okay so we just need the main pool and the allowance now first we'll do it without the short life asset election so the brought down balance is 15000 then we have additions qualifying for aia additions not qualifying for aia we don't we don't have this here because we haven't purchased a car no private use emission additions qualifying for aia so plant and machinery okay so we have one we have 10000 and we have 1.2 million because we haven't made the short life election we'll put them together in the main pool so it's 1.12 million okay and aia how much you can deduct 1 million minus now so when we go here we do the sum function it will go in the main pool 12000 which will go in the main pool and remember this 1 million is an allowance so we'll put here next is the amount here right it's the sum function now sum in the main pool 27 so now will we have in wda at what percent wd at 18 percent of this amount so 18 or 0 or 0 0.8 is the same thing 0 0.18 or 18 percent is the same thing of this enter this needs to be a minus figure so we'll put minus to make this number minus because we need to deduct wda from the 27,000. Now, WDA, this is an allowance, 4860. Then, this one, it is the carried forward balance. 
So it is the sum function. You can do the sum function because already there's a minus. If you deduct this from this, remember this is a minus figure. It will add it up because minus minus makes it plus. Try it yourself. This is tax written down value carried forward. And what would be the total allowance? TA. Total allowance for this year, sum of this two. Now remember, this one is for C. One more thing, they told capital allowance for three years to 31st December 2025, starting from 31st December 2023, 31st December 2024, 31st December 2025. Remember, this sale took place last year, 31st December 2025. So we'll put the year. Year ended 31st December 2023. This balance, this total allowance and this carried forward is for year ended 31st December 2023. Now we'll go to 31st December 2024. We'll paste. We'll just change the year. Okay. This year we'll have WDA only because we haven't purchased anything, not disposed anything. So 18% on this amount equal to, we'll put a minus because we need to deduct WDA into this amount. Enter. We'll round this up, drop the decimal. So 3985. 3985 is an allowance also. Okay. I'll write it here. So, okay. So, here just perform the sum function. From here, you deduct the sum. Done. Drop decimal. And then here, sum function again. This and this. Sorry, it will not be an addition. I'm sorry. For this year, it's only 3985. You see? So for two years, I've completed. Now, I'll be moving to the last year. Last year, we have a disposal. Just copy paste here and make it 2025 and tax written down value brought forward. Okay, this is brought forward balance. Okay, this is because it did a sum function. Wait a minute. So when I'm taking this, I need to copy, paste the value. Okay. Now, remember we have disposed for 1750. So we need to deduct this disposal. Minus 1750. So do a sum function. Deduct the disposal from written down brought forward balance. It's this much. And then again, we'll have WDA at what percent? 18 percent because we don't have any special rate balance here. Minus 0 0.18 into the sum of enter. Minus 2953. So 2953 is the allowance. Remember, here will not since we have not made any election for balancing allowance or charge, that's why this we don't have any balancing allowance or charge here. Now, this one I'll copy here, paste, and total allowance. Just do the sum function. 
and here it's 2953 for this year. Now, so this is with election. Okay, if you see with election, sorry, without election, I'm sorry, without short life election, what's your total allowance? TA. Just use the sum function and add the three total allowance. This one because of the three years we are adding. Just put a comma. When you are taking individual amounts, not dragging all the cells, just put a comma. And this, enter. So this is the amount of capital allowance. 1.1 uh, 1 million, 1 1.1 million something, right? Now, with election, we'll see the impact. Now, we'll just change the figure from here itself. Here, this time we'll not add the 10,000 here. This will be two and this will be one. This is correct. Rather, we are going to add another column over here, naming it short life asset. Short life SL asset. I'll write short life asset. Okay. So short life asset is 10,000. So here I'm going to put 10,000 separately here. And since allowance, I've taken 1 million entirely from here, I can't take from here. Zero. So here, you will be left with 17,000 and here 10,000 because 10 minus 0. Now WDA will be on 2. This is correct. On this also you have to take. So just drag it here. Automatically it will take. And 4860. So this total they have taken. Just drag this. Since I have done the formula in one column, if you drag it, automatically it will take it in the other column also. Okay. And the total allowance is automatically done. Just click here. You see, automatically is done. Total allowance. If you see the total allowance without election and with election, it is same. This amount only. Because if I go here, you see, this is same. The difference will come in the last year. I will show you how. Even the second one also will be same. Even this allowance will be same. 2023 and 2024 allowance will be same. With and without election. Difference comes in the uh, 31st December 2025. So now I am going to 31st December 2024. Okay. This is okay because this amount is already taken on this. I need to drag this here. You see, it's already taken. So it's 3985. And then just drag it to the other cell. And this is the amount. Now I'm going to 31st December 2025. This time, this amount will be deducted from here. It is this amount. Copy, paste the value. And just copy, paste the value here. This will be deducted from the short life asset pool now, the disposal, because this was disposed, actually, the short life asset. So this will remain the same. Okay. You need to perform a function here. Take the difference. Now, you see, remember they told 
there need to be a balancing allowance or balancing charge right even this is correct why because i have taken 18 percent of this amount this is wda but this one when we are taking remember that uh, this amount this is a positive amount that means it's a balancing allowance remember i told you if the sale proceed is less than the tax written down value brought forward balance then only we are going to have a balancing charge but here disposal is less than the brought forward balance so this is a balancing allowance because when we are selling we can't carry forward the balance so this the balancing allowance is the amount equal to this amount so it should be 4974 understood so this will be your balancing allowance now how much minus 4974 so here your balancing allowance will be 4974 okay 4974 and this this is WDA 2058 wait I will just add another column to it WD W D A copy paste this I will take from here So this is an allowance. This is also an allowance, 4974. You see? Now, what's happening? Here will not have any balance. It will be zero here. Because this goes completely from this. Now, the total allowance will be the sum of this. This two. Add. You see the difference comes here. Earlier it was. Earlier it was 2953. This time it is 7032. Now take the total allowance and say with election total allowance. Add all the three years allowance. This, comma, this is 2025, 2024, comma, and 2023. You see the difference this time the capital allowance is more so eventually the allowances will be same okay it just that timing of the allowance changes the election just accelerates the allowances otherwise overall you are going to re get relief of the same allowance only you understanding the total allowances available will be same only no matter you make the election or not but if you don't make the election, it will take longer for you to get the relief. You understand it because you're having a less capital allowance. You see here, here you're having more. That's the difference. So if not covered by AIA, it is recommended you take a short life treatment because then you can accelerate the balancing allowance like how you have taken here. But if, if this was a balancing charge, it's better not to take the election. This is what you have to advise. You see? Here it was 1.2 million. So 1 million is covered by this. That means the short life as a 10,000 you can't cover through AIA. That's why it's advisable to take the election. If this was less than 1 million, and then imagine if the short life asset also comes under AIA, then don't make the election. Okay. Let's move on to VAT. What is the impact on VAT on capital of capital allowances? In exam, VAT is 20%. Okay. So, sometimes you might be given the figure when you have purchased a non-current asset. Both addition or disposal, you might be given the figure with the VAT included in it. Right? Including the VAT 20%. Now, you what do you need to know? See, VAT I have not covered yet. There is a whole new part on VAT. Whole new chapter you can say one topic is on VAT only 
definitely we are going to cover VAT there in detail. But right now, what you need to know is if a business is registered for VAT, you can reclaim the VAT that has been charged while you purchase the non current asset. See, when we purchase the non current asset, we have to pay a VAT, right? You can reclaim this VAT from HMRC if you are registered for VAT. If you are not registered for VAT, you can't claim. But only exception here is the car. Car, you can recover the VAT only if the car is used 100% for the business. But we all know it's quite next to impossible that car will only be used for business purpose. That's why some cars are specifically for business, like driving school car. We don't use driving school car for private purpose. We use it for our business only, right? Or a car purchased for resale. This are for 100% business. That's why we can reclaim the VAT. Now, if a business can reclaim the VAT, then the cost of the asset in the capital allowance must be net of VAT. That means you have to take the VAT out. Net of VAT, you have to deduct the VAT. If you can reclaim the VAT. Now, when assets are sold, business are going to charge. See, when you're selling, you're charging the VAT. When you're purchasing, you are paying the VAT, right? So when the assets are sold, business must charge VAT on the sell profit of any asset on which VAT was reclaimed on the purchase. Since the business must pay over any VAT it collects to HMRC, actual proceed is kept by the business. So actual proceeds that are kept by the business are proceeds excluding VAT. Remember, no one can hold a VAT. If you are taking VAT also, ultimately you are collecting it on behalf of HMRC, you are going to pay this VAT to HMRC. So what business is holding, those proceeds are not including VAT. It is excluding VAT. You understand it? So business, if the business charges VAT on the sale, the proceed figure in the capital allowance must be net of VAT. This is very easy for you. So whether it is purchase or sell, if you can reclaim the VAT, if you charge the VAT, it is net of VAT. Very easy. Now let's do a question. Illustration 10. Now, there are three transactions. She purchased a machinery and remember all are inclusive of VAT. She purchased a machinery for 27, a car for 12,780 out of which 60% is only for business and sold an machinery for 1,200. Now, remember we have to take the appropriate price for capital allowance. It has to be you should take the VAT out. So for machinery, this 27,000, remember it is with VAT. You have to take the VAT out. How do you take the VAT out? This is how you take. Whenever something is inclusive, this is how you take out. So 27,000 into 100 divided by 120 because it is 20% VAT. If it was 30%, it would have been 100 divided by 130. Okay? 22,500. You see? So the difference is the VAT. 27,000 minus 22,500. The difference is the VAT. That VAT was included in this. So in your capital allowance calculation, you will you will be using 22,500, not 27,000. Coming to car, remember, Car, you can claim VAT only if it's 100% business use. You can't claim VAT for this. That's why when we are taking capital allowance car, it will be on this 12,780 with VAT. It will be inclusive of VAT. You can't reclaim the VAT. That's why 12,780. Coming to machinery when you are selling. When we purchase machinery, we could claim the VAT. We took without VAT. Here also we have. To, so when we are selling also, we have to take the VAT out. 1200 into 100 divided by 120, which would be 1000. This is all are for capital allowance. So that's it. We have finished our capital allowance lecture. I know, yes, after three hours, around 24 minutes. It's such a lengthy lecture. I know it's very hard to keep patience till the end, but what to do? This is a question which you are going to get 100% for your tax exam. So you have to bear patience. Anyway, so now let's summarize how we are going to do calculations on capital allowance. This is like an approach to your exam questions, computational questions. There are 12 steps. First step, 
you need to read the information in the question and decide after reading how many columns or pools you need to draw up. Second, you draft the layout. This layout will be given to you. Okay, I'll provide this layout. Try to uh, go through it. And then, after the layout, insert the tax written down value, value brought forward in the appropriate column. If it's in the main pool, in the main pool. If it's in the special way, special way, they will tell you which pool. But if you are a new trade, you have just started a business, you will not have any brought forward balance. This is common sense. Third, then you need to insert additions after the brought forward balance. Insert additions starting with those assets which are not eligible for AIA or FYA in the appropriate column. Also taking particular care for car. Cars you need to put in the correct column according to CO2 emission. Remember if it is between 1 to 50, it's in the main pool. If it's more than 50, it is in the special weight pool. If it's a new car, zero emission, FYA. It is eligible for FYA. Cars are never ever eligible for AIA. This you need to remember and then you insert additions eligible for AIA. First, I, I, sorry, additions not eligible for AIA or FYA, then additions eligible for AIA. Okay. In the first column, remember there's a column which we used to do, which there was no name for it. It's just inside working which we used to do to deduct our allowances. So always keep that inside column. Okay. That first column. So there we are going to put then allocate AIA according to the amount. Okay. Then you deduct. Maximum amount is 1 million. Remember this 1 million could go up and down based on the period of account. If period of account is short, will be less than 1 million. If it's more than 12 months, will be more. But FYA, remember FYA is 100% and it is never time apportioned. You will get 100% FYA for a new zero emission car. Whether it is less than 12 months, 12 months or more than 12 months. Only AIA and WDA are apportioned. Okay. So as I told you, remember to time apportion if not 12 months and allocate AIA to special rate pool in priority to additions to main pool or single asset column. Why is that? Because special rate pool, you only get 6%, but main pool, you will get 18% WDA. That's why first claim again, special rate, then main pool or single asset if you are planning to go for short life asset, if you have de pooled it. Step five, any special rate pool in excess of allocated AIA are added to special rate pool to increase the balance qualifying for 6%. So special rate pool are 6% WDA. Now, any pool which does not, I mean, it's more than AIA. After you have allocated AIA, there's still excess. That excess will go to the main pool and WDA will be charged at 18%. This we all know. Same approach is taken for single asset column also. Depending whether that single asset is a special, I mean, which type of asset. Now, six, you need to deal with disposal. Disposal always lower of cost or sale proceed. You will be given both the cost and sale proceed and decide which is lower. Step seven. Work out the balancing allowance and charge. Remember, balancing allowance and charge will only come if there's a disposal. Without disposal, why would you have a balancing allowance and charge? Okay? In the individual pool. You can have it in single asset. You can have it in main pool. You can have it in sing, uh, special rate pool. Remember to adjust for any private use portion. For private use, we have a separate column. Remember, we put private use and business use like that. And if there's a small pool, that means having where the balance of any of the pool is less than 1000, we can deduct the entire amount, right? Small pool WD is there. It can go in the main or special rate pool. Next, step nine, calculate the WDA after claiming AIA and FYA, either at eight or six percent. Remember to time a portion, if not 12 months. If there's a private use, adjust it. Remember that private use has to be by the owner of the unincorporated business, not by employees. If employee uses the car for personal use, it's not going to harm your capital allowance. You are going to get the 100% capital allowance. 10. 
okay so after wda insert additions eligible for fya fya is not going to have any impact on your wda brought forward balance that's why fya at the end you can add okay so for fya any new car new car not second hand car new car with zero emission 100% FYA. FYA never time apportioned. Then you calculate the tax return down value. T W D V. If you write T W D V B F brought forward or C F carry forward, it is okay. You don't need to write tax return down value word by word. Just use the initials. Short form is acceptable. Examiner will understand. So calculate this to carry forward to the next period of account. If they ask you to calculate, let's say for two years or three years. If it's for one year. It's enough. Just show the carry forward balance. That's it. If it's for next year also, that carry forward balance of this year will be the opening balance of the next year, brought forward of the next year. Okay. And then finally, add up all your allowances for that particular year. You are going to have a total allowance column at the end. That's the last column towards the right after having special rate, private use, main pool, etc. Finally, deduct the total allowance. What is the use of the total allowance to deduct from the tax adjusted trading profit? You might be given the tax adjusted trading profit. From there, deduct the total allowance. Now, let me show you the pro forma. How a capital allowance will look like. The calculation table. It's a big table. You need to do these calculations in Excel, by the way. Okay. So now, this is the pro forma of capital allowance computation for unincorporated business this is how it looks like we have a column here which is for our description narratives then we have second column where we are going to show notes okay definitely we are going to have some workings for some items where we need a separate note a separate working so the workings never show your working in the main table this table okay this table never show it you need to show it below after the table working space must be kept separate from the main then we have a third column as i told you this you can say it's the first column it's an inside column where we'll show workings like we'll for example if you have to deduct fya or aia this is this column for then we have the main pool so first main pool main pool will always have main pool special rate pool depending on the type of expenditure if we have a car more than 50 or any uh what's a building any uh what do i say improvements to the building or anything like that electricity thermal and insulation things like that then we have short life asset asset which you are planning to sell within eight years then we have private use asset if, if there's a private use otherwise we don't need this column then we have allowance allowance is going to be the last column towards the right okay now then of course the currency you need the currency now so just see what i'm going to do i'm going to put a the amount in each column that is represented by x so now First is the tax written down value brought forward. They can either give you for one pull or all the asset. So I'm going to put an X. See? Just wait a minute. Uh, okay. So X. You see? So here, just see what I'm doing. For first item is tax written down value brought forward, they will give you. So there is no note for it, nothing to do in, in, in the inside column. Directly in the main pool, there will be a balance. Then they might give you a balance in the special rate pool. Then short life asset. For private use, we will not have a brought forward balance, no allowance. Then the next one, additions. Additions not qualifying for AI or FYI. Can you, can you recall what we have, uh, the 12 steps that we went through? First, we told drop the column. Step one is brought forward balance, then add additions. So those are the steps which we are following here. Just go through those notes, keep those notes in front of you, and also go through this what I'm doing right now and see whether we are actually doing it or not. So then 
we are adding additions not qualifying for AIA or FYA. Can we see? So not qualifying for AIA is car. Car could be up to 50 or more than 50. Cars will never qualify for AIA. FYA, they can they they can be eligible for FYA if new and zero emission. But this these are not zero emission car. Okay. So second hand car up to 50 gram. That means between 1 to, 1 to 50 range will be in the main pool. And there's a note for it. We'll see the notes later. Okay. I've written the notes. So this one in the main pool. Sorry. The here. It will go in the main pool. Then. What's next? Cars up to 50. Second hand car will go in the main pool. Cars, they might not be second hand car. You might have purchased a new car, but it's 1 to 50. Still, it will go in the main pool. Over 50. Okay, sorry. This is a mistake I've done here. It's 50. Yeah. So over 50 will go in the special rate pool X. And then car with private use will go in the private use. Since we have not claimed any allowances, see, not eligible for AIA or OIA, we can't write anything in the allowance section. Then we have Qualifying for AIA, Special Rate Pool Expenditure. This is the second subtopic. Special Rate Pool Expenditure. As I told you, always stick. When we go for AIA, first claim it against Special Rate Pool because WD is only 6%. Whereas in the main pool, it is 18%. So take the advantage. Special Rate Pool Expenditure. When something is being qualified for or allow us, show, use the first column, this one, inside column. Not in the main pool or special rate pool. See, in the main pool or special rate pool, only the balance goes after deducting the allowance, AIA or FYA. Okay. So here, X. Yes, X. Then, you deduct the allowance. Maximum, 1 million. If it's, le if it's less than 1 million, the balance you can... Use for the main pool from the main pool expenditure, you can deduct AIA. Okay. So after this, transfer this balance to special rate pool. This is the special rate pool, this one. Now, remember you have claimed an allowance here. Wherever you have shown a deduction, this is an allowance. So immediately go in the allowance column and put an X there. You see? Check, always check the correct row and column. Match and check. Are you writing it in the correct one or not? Here, this one. It is not this. Up to this, this X is this allowance. Immediately, the moment you deduct an allowance from here, show it in the allowance co column. This is an easiest way that you will not miss out any allowance. You later don't try to come and write the allowance. You might forget. It's a very wrong strategy. Then we have plant and machinery. Plant and machinery is in the main pool. But still we'll show it in the inside column first. X. Then we deduct the AIA. If we don't have any, then it will be zero. This will be transferred to the main pool. Here. Okay. Next. What's next? Disposal. Disposal could be from either special rate, short life or main pool. So let's say mostly disposal are from the main pool. Okay. Lower of cost and this one. So we'll deduct from here. Done. Then. And let's say we have from short life asset as well. Then, the 
see here also we have deducted two allowances are there now two allowances then we'll write the amount here x x x x there'll be four nothing will be here it will be in this four column main pool special rate short life and private use then this disposal could be from here also okay i've shown now balancing allowance or charge balancing allowance it will be positive balancing ch charge it will be in bracket it's a negative figure so mostly it is possible if you have made the short life see you have made the election for short life asset how do i know this because if you haven't made the election you would have not you will not have this column here since you have this column means you made the election of short life asset that's why when we are showing the balancing allowance or charge show it from here the short life asset so it will arise here if it's balancing allowance x or if it's balancing charge is like this you see done now so balancing allowance or charge is also a form of allowance either it's a balancing allowance or charge if it's charge it will be shown in bracket because it will be deducted from your total capital allowance now and we'll later discover what are these notes okay now coming to wda after this there's a small pool wda also okay next 18 at 6 and this one is for car depending on emissions okay so if it's 18 percent it's from main pool okay and if it is this one special rate Remember, these are allowance. This will go in the allowance section. Then, this is for car. Let's say we have used the car privately. That's why we told 1618. So, here, private use, okay, we'll take the WDA. And multiply this by or I will show them. BU. BU is the business use, business use percentage. Okay. Now you need to write this in the allowance column as well. Okay. Now, additions qualifying for FYA, the last section. So, as I told you, it's new motor car with zero emission. This I will write in the notes. And I will deduct 100% of this amount. So, here in the main pool, the balance will be zero. Now, get the tax written down value of all from all the column. You don't need for the inside column. Okay, so here from the main pool, special rate pool, then short life asset. Remember, you will not have any carry forward balance because you have sold it. You have disposed private use yes and then finally total allowance total allowance will be the sum of all this in this column okay 
So that's it for the performer. Please go through this performer over and over again. Every question that you attempt on capital allowance, you'll be using this performer only. Now there are notes here. As you can see, note one here, note two is about private use. Then note three, note four, note five. So we'll go through these notes now. So now let's go through those notes which we have used in the pro forma capital allowance computation. Note one. Note one was about additions not qualifying for AIA or FYA, right? So cars are pulled according to their CO2 emission. Either it will go in the main or special rate pool. And new zero emission 100% FYA. Next was for private use. Private use cars are deep pulled. They are not pulled with special or main rate. Does not matter whatever their CO2 of emission. And only business proportion of allowance can be claimed. But remember CO2 emission, you need to decide your WDA rate, whether it is 6% special rate or 18% main rate. Then note 3. Note 3 was about AIA going to special rate pool. So as I told, AIA first allocate against special then main pool. Then note 4. Note 4 was expenditure qualifying for AIA in the main pool, which exists the level of AIA. It is eligible for a WD of 18%, the excess. And if it's was excess of expenditure over AIA in the special rate, will be qualifying for a WD of 6%. Then note 5, small pool WDA. Small pool WDA is if you are having a balance in any pool of less than 1000 for a 12 month period only, you can bring down the balance of the pool to zero write down the entire amount but only on the main and the special rate pool you can't do it from short life asset or private use uh, column okay this small pool wd is only for main or special rate pool only up to maximum wd of 1000 you can claim if it's more than 1000 small pool wd is not eligible then it is 18 or 6 percent then note 6 Note 6 is not there, but here they are giving you additional. They are saying that taxpayer might claim all or any or nothing at all out of FYA, AI or WDA. But for your exam purpose, you have to assume they are going to claim the maximum they could. If the question says they are not going to use it or they are not going to claim for it, then don't claim. But otherwise, if the question remains silent, you have to assume you have to claim. You have to use it whether it is FYA, AIA or WDA. Now, next, this is a very small allowance. Capital allowance we have finished. There's a separate allowance to it, which covers all the structure and buildings. It is known as structures and buildings allowance. SBA, right? Now, this standard was not there before. It's a new standard where a business incurs expenditure on qualifying costs for a new non-residential structure and building not residential non-residential or renovation or extension to that existing building on or after 29th october 2018 they are eligible for this allowance in your exam okay you will only be given questions for the building which was constructed or renovated on or after 6 April 2020. That means you are eligible for this allowance as well. And for limited companies from 1st April 2020. So you don't have to worry. You will that means this is eligible for you. So you will not be given buildings constructed before this 29th October 2018 date. That means you have to study this allowance. Where buildings are purchased as opposed to newly constructed. It should be assumed that SBAs are not available unless the question says, remember when you're purchasing the building, you can't claim this. This is only when you're constructing the building, newly constructing. So relief is given on a straight line basis up to 3%, 3% allowance. Now, the allowance can be claimed. When can you claim? Can be claimed from the date the asset is brought into use in the trade. It will therefore be time apportioned in the first period. 
Yes, because first period, you might not use it for the entire 12 months, right? So SBAs are also available to property letting business. Please understand, SBA, property letting business, SBA. Don't go and claim capital allowance there. Capital allowance is for car, plant and machinery, those things. For building, it is building allowance. Or even for the structure in the building, for renovation, improving, like that. Now, expenditures qualify for SBAs. You need to remember this and you need to keep this separate from capital allowance section. Buildings, including offices, retail or wholesale premises, factory, warehouses, subsequent improvement, structure, road, walls, bridges, tunnel. Qualifying costs do not include, remember, if it's land, not qualifying. Legal fee, not qualifying. Repair and maintenance, not qualifying. Where an unused building is purchased from a builder or a developer, the qualifying cost will be the price that you have paid less the value of the land. You have to take the value of the land out. Why? See, when you purchase a building, okay, we often pay the price of the land also with the building. It's not, it's not just the price of the building. Land is there. That's why we have to take the value of the land out of the purchase price of the building. That will be your qualifying cost. There is no pooling system for assets eligible for SBA. How we pull for capital allowance? We don't do here. So these are kept separate from other assets that qualify for capital allowance. Don't put it in that column section. Any asset eligible for SBA will not be eligible for AI. Remember this. Out of the two only one. Next. When an asset is sold, when you're selling, any SBA claimed will increase the sale proceed of the asset for the chargeable gain purpose. We have not covered chargeable gain, but just know it. That sale, your SBA will increase your sale proceed when you are selling the asset. That means there is no balancing adjustment made on sale. See, unlike capital allowance, when you are selling, we are going to have a balancing charge or allowance, right? Here, it's not like that. Here, what do we do? Here, your allowance is taken over by your buyer. Whoever is going to buy from you, the buyer will take over the remaining allowances from you. And if necessary, allowances will be apportioned in the period of disposal. It will be apportioned. So it's not going to get over. That's why we are not going to have any balancing adjustment how we have for capital allowance. Your allowance will now be taken over by your buyer, the remaining allowances. Remember this. Now that's it. Before we summarize this whole lecture, let us do a few questions to have a great understanding of the overall lecture. Illustration 11. Illustration 11 and test to understanding 9 are similar type of question. So I'm not going to do test to understanding 9. This one, this you can attempt on your own by using the knowledge of illustration 11. So let us solve illustration 11. You have been given some expenses relating to new factory. Okay. Le land, leveling of land, factory building, planning permission, four. Out of this, you have to decide which one are eligible for SBA, which are not. So land, not eligible. Leveling of land, yes. Factory building, yes. Planning permission, no. So the first two are eligible for SBA. So add up the two costs, 350 and nine. So 359,000 is the qualifying expenditure on SBA. You need to calculate SBA for year ended 31st March 2023. Remember, you can calculate SBA from the date the asset is ready for use. So the, even though they have constructed it by 31st March, factory was born into use on 1st of September 2022. You might construct it or it on any day, right? But you have to calculate it from the factory was bought into use. It is from 1st of September. So if you take from 1st of September till 31st March, it's seven months. Up to seven months you can claim. So this 359,000 straight line of 3% into seven months. This is your SBA. It is 6283. Part A is done. Part B. If you are selling this building for 750,000, what is the impact on the seller and the buyer on, on 1st December 2031? The buyer has a year end of 30th November. Now, 
so first let us explain the impact on the seller that is this one Alejandro okay so when we are explaining please write the seller and the buyer separately okay don't mix the two together so you need to write Alejandro is the seller now what is the impact of the see how much of as a sba will he be eligible for up till the date of the disposal right so it has been so you have to take it from 31st march to 1st december april may june july august september october november eight months right so 359,000 into 3% into 8 months. The remaining will be taken over by the buyer. How much? 7,180. So these allowances are available for him. Okay. Now, what about the buyer? Buyer takes over the right to claim SBA on the balance of the qualifying expenditure. Remember the purchase price 750,000. This is irrelevant, irrelevant. So SBA will be continued on 3%. Illustration 12, comprehensive example. Here you have been given the tax written down value in the main pool of 64,000. Then we have certain purchases and we have sold, right? Since this is a comprehensive example, means all what you have studied till now will be tested in illustration 12 and test to understanding 10. The last two question before we move on to practice objective test question. So let us quickly go and write the brought forward balance in the main pool 64,000. Now, additions qualifying for AIA, additions not qualifying for AIA. Okay, should be the first one. Here, just see this first expenditure is 1.20 thousand, right? 1 million 20 thousand, which is expected to last for 30 years. See, this is more than 25 and you have spent at least 100. So by definition, this is a long life asset, right? Long life asset. So even and when long life asset is there, we say we qualify, we use, utilize AIA first against that one. Then we purchased a new machinery. This will go in the main pool. Then we purchased a new zero emission car for 17,000. For this, we are going to get 100% FOIA. And the last one, CO2 em new car, but CO2 emission is 43. Since we between 1 to 50, it will go in the main pool. Then we sold an office old machine, which for 10,000, which was purchased for 15,000. Okay, that means it will be. 10,000 the price. So let's quickly fill in the blanks. Okay. Which will not qualify A. Okay. The car. First one is the car. The car of 18,000 will go in the main pool. Then we have long life asset. Long life asset of 1.2 million will do it in the inside column. Maximum AIA is 1 million minus since this is 1 million in the allowance also will write 1 million. We have used entirely we have utilized do the sum function here and just find the difference here. So in the balance we have 20,000. Then we have plant and machinery. Okay. We have plant and machinery for 40,000. So this 40,000, we don't have any AI to utilize. Immediately 40,000 will write in the main pool. Then we have disposal. See AIA, you have to write that it is zero. And you have to make a note why it is zero, okay? Because 
you can't claim nothing to claim zero so 40000 rather than immediately writing 40000 you have to show that because this addition is eligible for aia wait a minute after car you have to uh, add a column actually no let's see go here and inside a column additions qualifying for aia after that we will move on to disposal okay disposal is lower of cost and sell proceed so here sell proceed is 10,000 cost is 15,000 we are going to take 10,000 from main pool now let's do the sum function get the overall balance before we calculate wda here we just have one balance in the special rate pool so 20,000 so 112,000 in main pool 20,000 in the special rate pool now we are going to calculate wda at 18 percent on this amount for main pool and wda at six percent on 20,000 on the special rate pool so let's quickly do that this is going to be a negative figure so minus and here also equal to minus multiply this amount so you see now even this two are allowance so this two will be written here in the allowance column now we have one more additions qualifying for FYA just copy paste here additions qualifying for FYA which is the new car new car okay it's a wait it's a new car with zero emission make sure that you mention zero emission because not all new car is going to be applicable for FYA okay and you are going to get 100% FYA okay FYA is 100% so 100% of FYA FYA which is 100 percent what is the amount it is 17,000 okay I will write it in the inside column and minus 17,000 even 17,000 is what? even 17,000 is an allowance so it will go in the allowance column okay and now nothing will go here in the main pool okay zero now we are going to write the tax written down value carried forward we are going to calculate that it's just simply the sum function from here we are going to deduct this and here is the same no here some function this and this some bra put a bracket okay now total allowance total allowance some function we have four all this we have to put an equal sign and there's been some mistake in the function that I'm using sum and now put all the value and you see so this is the amount of total allowance 1 million 3 38,000 something so what did we do 
we allocated the ai against the special rate pool the long life asset over the main rate pool now let us go to test your understanding 10 now here as you can see we have to calculate the tax adjusted trading profit you have been given the tax adjusted trading profit 349,340 before taking account the capital allowance okay so we have to do that and this is for three months he prepared his first set of accounts for three months only so this is for three months we are doing all this we have to adjust the wda and aia for three months except fya so here you can see equipment then we have a car with 79 emission 60 percent business use car 48 but this time 20 percent private use this use is by, by employee remember when an employee uses there is no impact and equipment which you are expected to scrap in two years it's a short life asset right we'll see whether we can claim for it or not so now let's do this okay we'll just add here so we already have main pool and special rate pool since we don't have any special rate pool item here okay if you see here we have one special rate pool item which is more than 50 this one car with co2 emission of 79 but since here there's a private use we are going to put this in the private use rather than in the special rate pool column and then we have a short life asset so here we are going to add another column short life asset okay then we have private use change this to private use okay private use car then just add another column business use okay and then allowance so all these things are correct addition is not qualifying for ai or fy and all we don't have anything in the main pool brought forward okay because he's preparing his first set of accounts for three months so there can't be any brought forward balance so this we need to delete then addition is not qualifying which will not qualify car car with okay i'm not going to deduct this and i'm going to bring this forward this up this here okay now so here the one with 48 right which is 10,400 since this is used by employee it's not going to have any impact so full amount we can write 10,400 here in the main pool car with 48 kg per gram the emission is co2 is 48 grams per kg okay next we have a private use car before this it will come because even this will not qualify for aia or fya private use car the one which is above 50 which is this one 15,800 this will go in the private use section now because this is above 50 now additions qualifying for AIA if you see this one It is the equipment. I'll just change the name and the amount. It is two seven seven eight seventy five. 
remember now you need to adjust yeah, even this one recording equipment okay this will go in the short life asset 3 to 50 so we'll put this in the short life asset Three to fifty. Now, this AIF one million. Remember that one million is for twelve months. We need to adjust it for three months. So, if you take AIA, it will be equal to three divided by twelve multiply by one million. You see, it's two fifty thousand. Just put a minus two fifty thousand. So this time AI is 250,000 which you are going to claim against equipment and then you are left with a balance here. This just take the sum function of this two. which is this one. You have a balance here and here you will not have anything left to deduct. It will be zero here. And here AI is 250. So here in the allowance column, you'll be having 250,000. Next, we have we need to get the balance before we calculate WDA. Wait. Since we don't have any disposal, we are going to delete all this. Okay, already the balance is carried here right and here it is just 3250 is the balance and in the private use we have 15800 okay now wd when you are taking you have to adjust it for three months as well so when you are taking here 18 percent of this amount adjust it for three months multiply by 3 divided by 12. Enter. Just drag it forward here. Here it is taking 18%. Just go and change the percentage here. 6. You see? Right down right here. It's here. Here. You need to take 6%. Just take a minus so that answer automatically automatically converts into minus into this amount into 3 divided by 12 for 3 months. Wait a minute. The short life asset, the short life asset you have to see this one it goes in the main pool you have to take it into 18 percent i'm sorry it's not six percent it's 18 percent percentage is wrong we'll round this up to whole number drop down the decimal minus 146 okay so when we are taking here Okay, since both are 18%, we'll just copy paste the value here. Here, W at 6% is for this one, private use, because this is a special rate pooled item. So, minus 0 0.06 multiply by this amount into 3 divided by 12, minus 237. Remember to take the business proportion. Private uses business use is 60%. So here it will be 60%. Okay. So when we are taking here, it is this into here when we are taking it is this into this enter. Just change this to positive in the allowance column. Okay. Just put a minus and drop the zeros. And here, 
it is the sum function just add this to even this needs to be changed to a plus positive figure so just put a minus One eight. Okay. I just simply take one seven two two plus one forty six. Now that's it. You need to calculate the brought forward balance. You're going to de delete all this. Tax written down value carried forward. Okay. This is what we need. So automatically, they have taken this balance. I will copy it here. And this is also correct. Now, total allowance. Okay is already done so it's two five zero two five two zero one zero this is the amount of total allowance and these are the three tax written down value carried forward in the main pool short live asset and private use asset now that's not enough this is just a working okay this table comes as a working your Tax adjusted trading profit before capital allowance is this 349, 340. We'll do that because the question asks you to calculate tax adjusted trading profit after taking capital allowance into pick into the account. So profit adjusted profit is how much? 349, 340. CA capital allowance is this paste because it has a formula into it so when you're pasting it paste with a value and make this minus and round this up it's already round so do a sum function get the difference drop down the decimals and this is your Tax adjusted trading profit TATB 97330. Okay. Practice objective test questions. So we have four practice objective test questions let's do them test your understanding 11 12 13 and 14. in 11 you have to calculate capital allowance for nine months okay now so for nine months they have purchased a car for 12 500 30 percent business purpose car has a co2 emission of 49 remember cars are not eligible for AIA and this car will not be eligible for FYA also because it is not a zero emission car but it will be eligible for WDA looking at the percentage since it's 49% it will be eligible for 18% right in the main pool because it has to be more than 50 for it to be a 6% but you only have to take for nine months. So there is no other addition or anything, no brought forward balance, only 12,500. So you can straight away take 18% of 12,500, but only for nine months. You have to time apportion it. Okay. So that will be 1688 and 
1688 and because it has a personal use you can only claim up to 30% business purpose right up to 30% of this amount which will be 506 so d is the right answer now coming to test and understanding 12 here you have to say whether it's a balancing allowance or a charge and the right amount because there was a sale of the car okay so here the car was 17560 he sold the car for 17560 purchased it for 18000 sale price is less so we are going to take 17560 co2 emission is 70 more than 50 that means 6% special rate okay no balance on main or special rate pool so this one we are going to have now so addition is 18000 from 18000 you have to take 6% 6% of 18000 okay so 6% of 18000 is 1080 which is going to be 16 920 and your disposal proceed is 17560 so if you see sale proceed is more than the brought forward balance 640 this is a negative balance negative balance means is a balancing charge so the correct answer is a 640 is a balancing charge coming to test understanding 13 out of this which one does not qualify for capital allowance a movable partitions in an office capital allowance b swimming pool at a caravan park capital allowance c wall ceiling in a restaurant installed to cover pipes will keep it d cost of altering factory to install new machinery c is the right answer now to know whether c is the right answer or not you have to know the expenditure which qualifies for capital allowance you have to read the other three test understanding 14 so maximum capital allowance he can claim for 9 months okay he has a car and a plant and machinery car co2 emission is 57 and 100% business use now so we'll do this so straight away we'll write in the main pool okay there are going to be two pool one is main pool mp one is sp special rate and allowance okay so because this 8000 is 57% it will go in the special rate pool car and machinery will go in the in the main pool 15000 remember when we are taking aia okay we can claim aia first claim against so aia 15000 that means no balance will be there in the main pool special rate pool i mean wda from special rate pool will be remember you can't claim aia for car okay aia is only applicable for this so zero so since special rate it will be 6% for 9 months okay of 8000 because it's only for 9 months you have to apportion the wd is 360 so from and remember aia so allowance is 15000 this is 360 so 15360 b is the right answer now that's it now let's summarize the lecture So now let's summarize the lecture. We started with plant and machinery. Definition is active versus passive. Active means we use it for the trading actively, and passive means it is just there lying, but it does not have a main function to play. 
but on the background the plant animation is there that is known as passive function and when it is passive you do not classify it as plant imaginary then some are specified by law it does not follow the active versus passive function it is specified by law that they have deemed to be treated as plant imaginary then allowances first one is aia first 1 million exempt apply the pro rata for length of period of account if it's less than 12 months and more than 12 months you have to apportion accordingly this to 1 million then on car ai is not available first year allowance is available on new new zero emission or electric cars only never apply pro rata you don't it is fully available 100 percent whether your accounting period is 12 months less than 12 months or more than 12 months writing down allowance wda 18 percent for main rate pool six percent for special rate pool okay even this goes up and down based on the period of account how we do for aia then balancing adjustment either balancing charge or balancing allowance if it's a balancing allowance same like other allowance we'll add it with aia fya and wda if it's a balancing charge it is deducted from capital allowance and this balancing adjustment comes when we make a disposal okay then wda could be further broken down into small pools small pool if you are having a balance in the main pool or special rate pool up to 1000 1000 or less you can write off the entire amount deduct here also apply pro rata if it's more than or less than 12 months so as i said main rate and special rate pool only you can use wda balancing adjustment if your tax written down value is more than proceed it's an allowance and this is only on main pool and special rate pool when when you seize the trade that time you get this allowance charges is the other way around proceed is more than the written down value and it can occur on any pool at any time charges can happen at any time allowances only when you see the trade you have gone through the cessation of trade then there are some special situations cars for car if it's co2 emission is 1 to 50 main pool more than 50 special rate pool new zero to emission 100 percent fya private use assets goes in a separate pool there's a separate pool known as private use asset pool and allowance is only up to business percentage then short life short life assets define definition is when you are planning to sell or scrap within eight months sorry eight years from the date of chargeable period of acquisition you can elect to depot there's an election you can make whether to keep it as a short life asset or include it in the with the other asset and there are some uh, situations also when it is advisable to make this election and not special rate special rate is for qualifying expenditure we went through that big we went through that in the beginning then wd is six percent for special rate here also you have to apply pro rate for length of period of account last but not the least structure and buildings allowance sba qualifying expenditures are non residential structure and buildings only separate from plant and machinery that means separate from capital allowance here also we have wda which is 3% on a straight line basis time apportion for short accounting period and if brought into use part way through period then when you are disposing it there is no balancing adjustments on disposal how we have a capital allowance here the seller takes over the right to SBA from the buyer at the date of disposal and buyer claims SBA based on seller's qualifying expenditure so buyer will claim the SBA based on seller's qualifying expenditure the remaining expenditure qualifying expenditure on that buyer can claim SBA they take over the right from the seller and seller have to time apportion the SBA to the date of disposal that's it for this lecture and thank you for be bearing patience with me and watching this lecture till the end i know it's pretty lengthy but you know you have no option now it's your job to pick up that revision kit and start doing questions on capital allowances each and every question and 
best of luck thank you for watching and i shall see you in the next lecture and meanwhile do not forget to subscribe to my channel share with your friends thank you